Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode with my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Yo, turn me up, Lano. I'm trying to make sure I, I come in crispy, clear. Yes, I we, like that. We got the headphones on today, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very special episode today, too, by the way. Oh, very special episode today, guys, because in here, we are in here rocking with somebody that you all are very familiar with, Because they watch all the episodes. Number one, this is... Uh, so, guys, we look at all the analytics. We take into yes. consideration what our members are saying in terms of the guests <laughs> they want to show. But we also look at what you're watching. And by far, 30 days, 90 days, 120 days, the number one YouTube channel you guys are watching. You are watching this beautiful presence that we have on here, on the set of Hardly Initiated today. You are in here rocking with Hardly Initiated and Samantha Lee. Welcome <laughs> to the show. How you Yay! feeling? Hey, I'm here. I'm feeling great, y'all. I'm a little nervous. You nervous? This is new. No. This is very new, but um, I'm going to behave tonight, y'all. I'm going to behave tonight. I can't see the chat, but I'm going to behave tonight. What's up? No, 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 no. no, <laughs> no listen, listen, listen. It's, it's, it's after 8 p.m. There's no behaving, okay? This... Is the oh. nighttime show, guys. This is no but look, let her know why we roll over here. Let me get this out the shot here. They just need to see you. Yo, future reference though. Listen, Samantha Lee, we, you the first person we got to get a boost to see for though. We oh, got to wow. get a high up in the seat. We got to get a high up in the seat. <laughs> well, you kind of crooked. You got crooked. You got to straighten up a little bit, Samantha. Yeah, I like my angles. Hey, put, that, put that boost on the you Amazon to, list. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> He's lying, you guys. It's not true. <laughs> So it's look, actually not true. I am so tall. What we're going to do here, I want to give y'all the announcements. Y'all, we're going to have an amazing show here today, y'all. Oh, we're going to have an amazing <laughs> show because today, y'all, we are going to be talking oh, <laughs> the ugly truth about divorce. Okay, so we're going to be talking about navigating that process. No, like so it is going to go down here today. And while we're getting warmed up, Anishias, okay. drop your city in the chat. My initiates in here, drop your city in the chat. I want to see where y'all from. Ryan, go ahead and let the people know the announcements that we got here to come. Okay, so we're getting warmed up, guys. Let me tell you this. I don't know if y'all seen this yesterday, but we dropped a video with Tony Gaskins. And, and you guys probably are probably already noticed this. We got the Monday, Wednesday live, but the Sunday yes. is a little different. The Sundays are like church. The Sundays are transformational. We dropped a transformational episode with Tony Gaskins. We got 65,000 views in 24 hours. One day. So y'all, yeah, in one day. So y'all better go tune into the episode right after this one. But this is the thing, guys. We got a lot of announcements. I know I, I, know I told y'all that the custom emojis and the YouTube post is coming. Be patient. We're working on that. And of course, all super chats are appreciated, but very special. Anything at or above 10 bucks will actually be read live on air by myself or yeah, Tyshawn. Yeah. Now, this is the thing, guys. We actually did hit our goal in August and September, and we're still exceeding the goal for super chats over 3,500 bucks already. We just had a new sound treatment consultation today, so our quote will be ready sometime this week. So I'll update you guys where we're at so you guys can know exactly how much we're going to have to fork over for these new studio improvements and so we can actually give you the date that you can see the changes, guys, because we keep it 1,000. Now, real quick, just got a favor for you guys. Make sure you do this one thing. I'm only going to ask one thing today. Hit the like button as many times as you guys hit the like button. That's as many times as YouTube is going to share that with like-minded people because we're always trying to add people to the community. So, Tashawn, let's get rocking, man. Let's get rocking. How you feeling, Samantha? I'm feeling good. I'm a little, this is new. I had to, I, you know, my hair, you know, y'all know I don't do my own hair. So, yeah, I had to make sure my hair gets a little love here because, you know, yeah, you, it takes a lot of time. Now you look good. The outfit is nice. You look the great. smells is on point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I, that's how I like the ladies coming in looking good, smelling good. And um, we're gonna have a great conversation here yeah. as well because we're gonna help some people tonight. Yeah. I don't know if anybody in here has gone through the divorce process, is considering going through the process, or is living a life right after. All right. But either way, this show here is gonna definitely add some value to you because one, Samantha, I love the content you put online. Thank you. Samantha, I don't know if y'all know, she's putting some amazing content, which we're going to be dropping her information throughout this conversation in the chat. And if you're watching a pre-record, it's going to be in the description. Y'all definitely need to tap in with this sister. Uh, but in general, you really going to give us some good game because you personally 
obviously had an experience mm -hmm. where you were divorced, mm -hmm. obviously, or you went through the process itself. Absolutely. So let's kind of talk about that with the people here tonight. Mm -hmm. We can talk about it, Lord. I'm certain things I ain't gonna say, but you know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm open to my perspectives of like my half of it. Absolutely. That's I want listen. I just want you to say whatever you feel comfortable saying tonight, okay. because that's what's gonna help free the people. That's right. Because <clears throat> this is what I want to know. Let's start right here. Because obviously, we promote healthy relationships. We don't want divorce. Right. But at the end of the day, sometimes that's the option that you have to go about mm -hmm. taking just for your own peace. Right. You know, and your own happiness at some point. But I, some parts of me, even as a man, is a bit concerned about whether or not it's my partner's going to be so focused on happiness that we're not going to be able to weather hard times, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And people can just bow out mm -hmm. and opt out of divorce because they just don't want to go through those trenches and those pits I get that. that you inevitably go through in marriage. So how did you know that divorce was the right option mm -hmm. for you in your relationship? So I, first off, what I want to say in general, we know that women file for divorce more often than not. I think a lot of times we do it out of hurt, out of anger, um, unforgiveness. And you you covered this with Dr. Spirit, which shout out to you, sis. I, I love shout you. out to Dr. Spirit. <laughs> but it's, it's, um, it's a lot of unforgiveness. And that unforgiveness, if it's left unforgiven, turns into bitterness. And that bitterness can build a fence. And that fence becomes it becomes very hard to feel um when you build that wall up. Mm -hmm. And I think that um of course I won't I won't go into specifics about what happened or why it happened. Um but I will say that it's very important for you to seek wise counsel. I've had a therapist for a very long time. So um I love ones, um people that support you. You want to make sure that you are involving in that decision making. And you have to really decide and make a very calculated decision um, based upon your belief systems, um, based upon who you're speaking to, your wise counsel, like giving them the information and then making the, be the best decision. Um, I think that we do take divorce very casually. And I'll yeah. admit, I probably looked at it a little, <clears throat> little less intensely as I should have. Mm. That's me looking back on it um, because I would never tell I, I I work with women. I would never tell a woman to walk through that in the same frame of mind I was in when I did it. And what, when you say that, but what frame of mind was that? What, what, what do you mean by that in particular? I was very, <clears throat> very hurt. I was very angry. And I remember like when I made like the, the decision, I was like hysterically crying mm. on the phone with my attorney. That was not wow. the person I should have been on the phone with when like, that's a whole nother conversation. But anyway, I was hysterically crying and I was not in any position to make that decision. I was extremely emotionally intoxicated. Mm. We can be intoxicated with our emotions. And I'm one, I'm very much emotionally led. I feel very strongly. I'm just that kind of person, very passionate. But um, I would never tell somebody to make that decision when they're that emotional. But of course I was, and I wasn't talking to someone that genuinely would be for marriage, you know, or, or for reconciliation. And that's not, to, that's not no slight to my, you know. No, it's, the, it's the current, the current it's not, Yeah, it has nothing. There's no slight to that. It, not the friends, but I was on the phone with my attorney. Yeah. So it, it was something that was being said to me that hurt me at that time. And that... um so at that time when I was on the phone and I made that decision, I was, I was, I was, I was livid. 
I was emotional. I was hysterical. And so I, if, if anything, if I could take anything from that and advise somebody else, because I don't want families to be torn apart. Yeah. It would be that if you're that hurt and you're like that emotional about someone, that's not a lack of love. Like the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. It's void of love, void of feelings. And mm. so if I'm that emotional and I'm that hurt and I'm like on that level where I'm just like, I can't stop thinking and I'm just obsessing over why I am hurt. I have, I'm, I, if it's misguided and misdirected, it can go in, in a bad direction. And so I think that with that being said, I didn't know that at the time. Yeah. And I made a decision like, well, I'm so angry. I'm so hurt. And you know, this is, you know, and I'm just like, you know, forget it, you know, like, never mind. Like I need to be done with this. This is horrible. You know, just all you just ruminating on all the negative things and not focused on any of the positive things. I posted a, um, a reel and I mean this, I, I, I really mean this. There was a, there was a guy who was talking about the, that when he, before he decided to marry his wife, he had said, or had told, um, his wife that he needed to choose the people that would speak to her in her most emotional moments. Mm. And he would, it was people that would be for the relationship. Right. And I know a lot of people had different kind of like comments about the person and everything like that. But the message of what he was saying for me resounds true because the people I had in my ear at the time were not for that. Let me ask you this, because I think that's such a good point. Like when you're even in that spot, where, when you're emotional, yes. you're in the pit of your relationship. Yes. It's so important to make sure you have people who are pro marriage, pro relationship, 100%. pro your current relationship 100%. to be able to help, you know, as much as possible, 100%. make the best decision to keep the marriage going Yeah, when everybody may not have access to that counsel. So let me ask you this. If you, if we can go back and if I were able somehow to insulate you with a pro marriage, pro relationship community, do you think you still would have actually gone through a divorce? Not that time. Okay. I don't know what would have happened. Oh, I've never said this publicly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what this we do. Is this is the exclusive, baby. <laughs> Delano, Delano, make sure you zoom in on this one. Okay? Yeah. It gets, I mean, it gets don't, deep. Actually, no. <laughs> I want to deny myself. I want to deny ability. Um, yeah, no, I, I, um, the, the, the truth about the matter is that if I had different people in my ear at that time, I would not have made that decision. No, wow, I wouldn't. And that's the truth. I, um, I try my very best at this point in my life to be what I didn't have in that moment. Um, because I think that I was, <sighs> women were like, I'm an extremely emotional person. People that know me know that about me. I'm the kind of person that like, okay, I feel so strong blah, 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 and I can ruminate. I can get so lost in my thoughts. I know a lot of women are like that. Like we're a lot, not all of us, right? But some of us are just like a lot of men can be like that. But I know women specifically, the there will be moments where they'll be like, I'm ready to, I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done. I can't stand this. He don't do this. He don't do that. Blah, 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 blah. And we're just focusing on these things. And because you don't have, you don't have a certain um, person in your life to say, to check you and say, sis, what about this? What about this? What about these strengths? What about what he's not doing? What like those types of things. Um, that's, that can that can get you thinking about the positive aspects of this person that you may not be thinking about when you're upset. You're only thinking about what you're mad about. Yeah. You're not thinking about all the other positive aspects of this person. Um, and so in those moments, you need somebody to be the, the person for that person. Yeah. Um, in those moments. So it's still some people in the chat right now that they still confuse. They, they really not understanding with the pro marriage. 
right? Or somebody who's an sure. advocate for marriage. Sure, so sure, if you sure. could just paint the the people who weren't necessarily pro marriage and you come into them or you just expressing these different mm -hmm. issues that you have in, yeah. what type of responses were you actually getting versus what you should have been receiving? It's not, it's not so much about what sh what should have been re received because I think that based upon what had 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 occurred in our relationship by that time, a lot of people were at, were were saying that this was time for me to to leave this this you know particular relationship. Yeah, it wasn't just me; it was my loved ones. Um, yeah. I might you know I, I have been seeing a therapist. My therapist, you know, I had people that were like, you know, this is it's time this is not the best decision for you to remain in as is. And so when that happened, um, or what, what, what I mean by pro marriage is that there is people in my life that it's not so much pro marriage it's pro the other person. So my, my thought process based upon the clip that I shared in on my own page was he had people in his life that would advocate for her mm. in her mo in in his most heated moments, and he wanted his wife to have people that would advocate for him in those moments. And so it wasn't necessarily somebody that was pro marriage as much it was as it was giving a different perspective on that person that would be fair to that person in that moment. So it could be a best, like it might be, let's say my best friend, my home girl, she might be pro marriage, but she's pro me. She going to advocate for me on that phone. I'm talking about somebody that maybe, maybe it's his sister. Maybe it's his mom. Maybe it's somebody that can, maybe not the mom. I don't want to do the mom, but like somebody else in his life that could, that could advocate and speak to him mm -hmm. that he has designated, because that's what this guy did. He had designated certain people that when she's that upset and she needs an ear, she's not just talking to friends, her own friends who are going to advocate for her, but more or less somebody that's going to advocate for him in those moments and be able to be a voice of reason for him when she's not hearing him. That's what he was asked. That's what he was saying. And that's what I think that I didn't have. I had people that were in my life that were advocating for me. And that's not a negative thing. Yeah. It just was at the time being so hurt, so emotional, just being in my feelings, making a move. I didn't necessarily have that, nor did I make space for that. And so I would say to a woman that's highly upset, that's highly emotional, it's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm about to call the da -da -da -da. He did this. He did that again, blah, blah, blah. You go, go. No, no, you're not. You're actually not ready to do this. Mm. You being at this space of emotional intoxication, you're making a life-changing decision. You have absolutely no idea what you're about to walk into. So I, you should actually sit down, chill out, relax, call somebody that, you know, watch one of your favorite shows, walk around, do something different and then come to a place or call somebody. I know in my own life and in the women that I've worked with for a very long time, they know that they can reach out to me like, sis, I'm, you know, my husband's doing X, Y, and Z. Can I, can I, can I reach out to you? And I'll, they'll reach out to me and we'll sit on the phone. I'd be like, no, nah, you're wrong. Are you ready to hear this? You're wrong. You actually should be doing this. You actually should. And they, tr they've grown to trust me. Because they know that ultimately, I'm going to say when somebody is wrong, but I'm going to give you a perspective that is not going to break the family up. Mm -hmm. Because I am experiencing a broken family. I'm experiencing what that's like. Yeah. And I think that sometimes in our culture, we don't allow space for, like, it's like we want to be able to be strong and have these, we think being strong is is angry and taking control over the situation. Like, that's not strength. Yeah. That's not. So, yeah, so sorry. Okay, so this is the thing. So, because you talked about people don't detail or maybe they don't uh, give you the counsel you need preparing you for what you're about to walk into. Right. So, I really want to find out, like, what do you actually walk into? So, at the <laughs> point of you filing a divorce, right, you got... The 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 wife 
um, and the husband. You got these two sides now right. on the opposite sides. So, like, what actually happens at the point you file for divorce? Like, what happens with you? What happens with the family? What happens with friends? Like, how are all the pieces laid out? Oh, goodness. Um, it's, okay. you know, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so you uh, typically in a situation, if if anybody, whether it's a male or female, decides to proceed with a divorce, you would then file for a divorce. Um, and so at that point, you were either retain or turn or you do you fill out the paperwork yourself. People can do it themselves. Um, once you get lawyers involved, I'll be honest, and I I mean, I love my, you know, I don't want to shade anybody or whatever, but lawyers court systems win in this. No, families don't win in divorce. Yeah, I've heard that before. Lawyers win. Um, they win. We we families don't win. You don't win when a family broke is broken apart. I think Jay Z said this. He's like, nobody wins when the family feuds. Yeah. Nobody wins. It's not a situation where somebody is a winner. Um, but you you basically they in it when you get lawyers involved. And, our, you know, there was a therapist that was speaking to both me and him, a marital therapist at the time, that when I told him my decision, he was like, um, you know, when you get lawyers involved, it gets ugly. Mm. He told me that. And, you know, I didn't even realize, I don't think I even realized how ugly it would get. You know, and uh, like I said, I could, if I could walk back in time, you know, sometimes I battle with myself about that. But at that time, I thought I was doing the right thing or the best thing. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know how ugly it could get. And I know a lot of women, we make that decision and we're so hurt and angry. And then five, six months later, you're not that angry anymore. Like, oh, this kind of like still care about him. I kind of still have these feelings for him now that I've had time has passed and I'm not in his face every day. I've, I've now had the space to like forgive and, 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 and open myself up to that. But now you've made an irreparable hole. Yeah. Because you didn't, you didn't have the ability to step back and, and understand that if I'm this hurt and I'm crying, I'm this upset and this, at this high level of emotionality, this is not me being done with the relationship. This is me still in the relationship needing to work this out with this person. Yeah. Because I'm I like, instead of saying, well, this person hurt me so bad, so I just got to go. Like, that's not, that's, that's inaccurate. So no, no. So you, this is good counsel. You're, you're pretty much saying a, before you make a decision, insulate yourself with a community that's going to give you, a balanced perspective. A balanced perspective. That's going to be an uh, advocate of your own self-care. Sure. As well as that can speak for your partner. Yes. In a healthy way. Yes. And also make sure you're in a stable emotional state where you're not at a high erratic place of emotion. Yeah. When you're making a life family altering decision. I'm telling you that is the biggest mistake. That would That's the biggest regret. I have, I currently have. And you given a distinction that when you contact the attorney, that's pretty much when <laughs> it all truly starts. <laughs> it's war. <laughs> like, okay. it becomes, even if you don't, I mean, of course, there's obviously people that walk out and it's not, it doesn't have to be that. But if for, in our, my situation, you've got two highly emotional people. Now you've got two attorneys speaking on behalf and trying to advocate and win a case and going as far as they can go to win the case to, you know, like prove their point. I mean, do their job essentially. To win. Mm. To win. I mean, that's, that's the point. It's, it's they're winning. We're losing, both yeah. of us, but they're winning. And so um it becomes like that. And when you get the, when you get the lawyers involved, it gets ugly. And a lot of women are very cavalier about this. And this is like a passionate one. Y'all know I'm like, I'm mixed. <laughs> <laughs> I am mixed with white, black, and Hispanic. So there's a lot going on. But the Caribbean and Hispanic side of me is passionate. So I'm going to use my hands. I'm going to jump up. I'm going to do a lot of different things. It's just how I am. 
But like, I get very passionate about this. A lot of women want to get married to get married. It has absolutely no, I, no understanding of the responsibilities and the commitment and what you're saying on the other side of I do. Mm. And a lot of times, even myself in my life, I've used my emotionality to protect me. Like to put my anger to protect me, my ability to run away to protect me. But when it comes to a marriage, we have to get a better understanding in a honing of those skills before you decide to say you want to get married. If you've always been a runner and you say, oh, I'm about to get married to this dude, you know, and we about right. to do this thing. You need to work on your little running issue. Because guaranteed that marriage is going to trigger a running issue on you. Yeah. Mm. And you're going to have to now deal with that trigger in a very real way. And if you haven't worked on that, you end up running. Now, Sam, let me, let me ask you this, because I think a big reason that a lot of, you know, people, well, me, me just communicating personally, as well as the chat, mm. they feel like they leave their marriage when they're at this place of, almost like helplessness and loneliness where they feel like the other person isn't working as hard as them yes. to fix the marriage. Yes. yes and yes. you just feel like you're kind of working alone yes. and it's a one-sided relationship at yes. some point. Oh, yes. Did you feel like, is that, is that what was actually happening at that point? Did you feel like you, your partner was not necessarily working as hard as you to get the relationship to where it needed to be, to be healthy? Was that, was that a reality that you had in your relationship? To be fair to him, because I want to be fair, I'm going to speak, speak to him lovingly. I think that he was doing what he felt like was his best. Okay. I think what I was asking and what I needed were things that I don't know if, if I, it wasn't. In, when I left, I wanted certain things. And mm -hmm. he decided that he did not want to do those things. Okay. And when, and I felt like at that point, if you don't, if you can't meet, if you were wanting certain things for me and sacrifices for me, and then when I asked or finally asked for something and you're like, no, well then at that point, like you're giving me no, really no other choice. You yeah. know, I either, you're not like really leaving room for me to, you know, do something else. It's like, nah, it ain't going to do what you want. So it was like, okay, well, what can I, what do I do? I either change me, change my perception of it. And if I've changed and changed and changed and changed in my perception and, and, and done as much as I can to my perception of what's going on. And then, or there's three ways the situation changes. So let me just say that like in relational theory, there's a three model, triangular model, situation, you and the person that you're in a relationship with. Either you change, relationship changes, or the other person changes. Only three ways that a relationship can change. So if I've changed and changed and changed and changed, and I can't control another person, so I keep trying to change my perception or change my behavior or change something about me so I can receive this other person. If I've come to a place where I've exhausted all that I can do to make this situation occur or work or be functional or healthy, yeah, then the only other option I have is for the relationship to change because that person has decided not to. Now, here's, the, here's a fair. Do you feel like you did exhaust? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, e even I, even in the like the current day, because now I feel like you're a different woman now today. I am. Like even if in today's version of mm. exhausting all of your resources, yeah. Do you still have? Do you still think it's the same? Like do you, to to the standard that you have today of evolving and changing who mm -hmm. you are? Because mm -hmm. I think that's another thing too, right? Like I think at different parts of our life, we just have different tolerance levels. We have different skill sets. Mm -hmm. We just know more. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Knowing what you know today. Do you still think and hold yourself to the standard that you've exhausted all that you possibly could have? I'm going to think about this deeply too. I want you I would to have like, a, you like to. a real <clears throat> answer from me and not a. I think I could have waited longer. I, that's, I openly say that. I openly say that I could have waited. 
I could have been a little bit more patient with that. Like I had my like what I said, I could have waited, right? I could mm. have taken a pause and given it time and maybe he was reacting to what I was saying and he was upset with what I was he was, you know, he's an emotional he's an emotional person as well, you know. We're both feeling very strongly about each other and feeling very strongly about what we wanted. And to be fair, <laughs> I can see in that moment him being upset and and saying no and that really meaning that, right? Like maybe it was just like, I'm just, I'm just like you highly upset. You made a decision. I'm highly upset. I made a decision right. or I said something, but right. Just a reaction. Right. As a reaction. So I could have, I could have been open and more, more patient to that. But do I think that as far as what efforts I put in to make it work, did yeah. I do as much as I possibly could? Absolutely. I could have been more patient. That didn't require me doing, but being. And so like, I could have, stayed present mm. and been a little bit more patient. You know, that's something I could have done. Um, I could have been more patient with his, with his process. Yes. Sam, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> what? That was some, listen, you keeping it real tonight. <laughs> I am. I, I, I'm, I really not gonna, am. I, I'm not going to lie because like, <laughs> that's a real statement. Like I, I love, I love your objectivity tonight because I think women need to hear this because I'm going to be honest. We've had guys, we have had shows with just guys. We've had shows with just ladies. Yeah. We've had shows with one guy, multiple guys, one lady, multiple ladies. And I'm going to be honest. And y'all can go back and watch our content. In my opinion, I feel like you typically hear most of the accountability from the men. Like men typically in general take accountability if the marriage went bad, the things that they messed up on. It's, it's, it's less, it's a lot less victimhood in the conversation where well, I typically don't get that as often when I hear the lady speak, but when I'm hearing you speak tonight, I am hearing this level of objectivity that I don't necessarily hear from ladies, which I appreciate. Cause, and I can tell your answers are thoughtful. And I think, <laughs> and I think what you're saying is real Yeah. because when you think about, even when you're saying that somebody needs to be in a, at a level place of emotion when going through divorce, that's not even common. I literally had a close friend of mine go through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And I remember me and Ryan went out to a function. This is before it all went down. We saw him and his wife at the function. His wife was sitting alone. And when I walked up to her to greet her, the funny thing, I knew something was off. First of all, she was way too tipsy. And <laughs> I hugged her and she was just way too touchy. I didn't like that. The lingering touch. Very, yeah, very lingering. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't overtly inappropriate, wow. but it was like an undertone of inappropriate. Right. And this wasn't like her. She's a very poised, classy woman. And I instantly knew something was wrong. So I, I, and, I and I had a feeling I knew what it was. So I looked and I told her, it's going to be okay. I said, listen, trust me. It's going to be okay. Y'all need to, listen, work through this shit. And I said that to her. Instantly I said that, tears started falling from her eyes. Mm. Yeah. And she said, she was like, Ty, I can't be the only one doing this. I can't be the only one fighting for this. I get a call a few weeks later, two weeks later from him. And he told me I need a divorce attorney because I just got served divorce papers from the, from the guy. Didn't even know this was happening. That means that probably even when I was telling her this, she probably had already been speaking to attorneys Definitely. at this point. So I can imagine the emotional place that she's in and most people when they're going through that process. So when we're talking about telling ladies, yo, I know that this is how you feel. I know that this is what you're going through, but you need to be patient in this, in this place that you're in, this emotional place, and let this dust settle a bit. Yeah. And then look at making these life-changing, family-changing decisions yes. before you move forward. Absolutely. I think that's major counsel. Do you mind putting a poll together? Yeah, what's the poll? Oh God, I want to. I want to talk to the people. What's the poll? Because I, I want to <laughs> know. Wait, why you? Why are you worry about the poll? The poll gonna be lit. No, listen. <laughs> I want to see if we have the people in here. I'm listening. If they're either considering divorce. Oh Jesus. Okay, we're going there. Going today, through folks. a divorce, or have been divorced, or whatever you add to it. Because Ryan got the crazy. He got the best options on a poll. So however you can swag that out too. I just want to kind of get a feel <laughs> for that. And by the way, the Facebook family that's on here. We are 30 minutes in. 
So please come to YouTube. We're about to close down the Facebook Live. Come on over to YouTube. And we already got almost 800 people in here. Ooh. I need you guys to please press the like button because we only got 200 likes. Let's get it to 400 real quick because we need to spread this message because Sam is keeping it so 100. I promise she's going to say- It's making me uncomfortable. She's going to save some family. <laughs> no, you're saving families tonight. No, I'm glad you're thinking too before you're speaking. That's the most you're important You're not saying thing. nothing cliche. You're saying things mm. that I, I promise you, you're saving a soul in here tonight. Even if it's just, if we can keep one family together in here, it's going to be worth it. So I appreciate you for that. So I just made this one very simple, guys. So make sure you go answer that poll real quick. I got, are you considering going through or have experienced a divorce? Very simple, yes or no. We're just trying to see if we got a bunch of divorcees or a bunch of potential divorcees in the chat right now. Yes. Or if we got some people who are ready to stick it out and make it to the end. And uh, I want to do this real quick because we got a couple people I want to give a shout out to. Shout out to do uh, that. Doris and Didi says they first time on live. So, guys, do this for me. If this is your first time ever catching us live, I want you to drive, uh, drop live in the chat right now. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Lady Fancy and RL Vaughn for joining the memberships. And shout out to Vanita and SBU Live. Vanita. But yeah. Shout out to them for sending over them super chats. VJ, we love you. Big shout out to SBU Live. Big shout out. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you uh you thinking about these 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 statements first because it is a lot to consider, especially when you think about because hindsight is 2020. It is. So yeah. no, yeah. It, it 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 really is 2020. I can't wait to read that that the, those poll results and mm -hmm. we're gonna keep the conversation going. They coming in until, quick, until man. It's a, it's a lot of people. 61 percent right now so far saying Ooh. yes to that question about divorce. That's heavy. They, that means they're considering it. Either considering it, been through it, or oh, going okay. through it right now. Okay. So, so let me ask you this here because sure. obviously you said the attorneys are the only ones that win. I think the lawyers win, yeah. When yeah. you're going through the process, it makes and and that that would actually make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, because I did call up my attorney friend to mm -hmm. refer, um, uh, her over to my um my guy, and even the way the conversation was being had, it just was it was so mechanical it was so unemotional and it was just the way it happened i knew it felt like it was just such an administrative conversation yeah and yeah. and i i knew what was about to happen right it, i, I kind of i just felt it and it's a very loveless conversation and the thing about it is i see when you say yo when you call this it changes the whole vibe of the relationship it does did you see did you like is that when the worst of either you or your partner oh, came absolutely. out at that point in time? Absolutely. I, I mean, he, yeah, it, it was, you know, my, I, and I want, I don't want either my, like I, my attorneys have had my back and I've, I've, you know, that's, that's something that's, I want to say that first. I'm yeah, not yeah, trying yeah. to, you no, know, no shade, my, no shady attorneys to my, you know, to attorneys or whatever. I'm not trying to shade nobody. I'm just saying the truth, what I believe is true. Um, I would say that absolutely the dynamics change. Like you, you, when you start lawyering up and they're speaking on, they're going to say things, both parties are going to say things that are very, very hurtful, that are going to be damaging, that are going to paint a certain picture in order to win the case or win whatever they're trying to win or defend or whatever they're trying to defend. Mm -hmm. um, and that gets very ugly because you're not, you know, it gets very ugly. It gets very ugly. There's there's no other way to put it besides ugly. We have, you know, two people that are being represented. We're both highly emotional. We're both, right. you know, coming at each other. And, um, and at the end of the day, you, you do want to win. I mean, you want to get whatever it is that you feel like absolutely. you just do. Yeah. And it is the, you know, divorce proceeding is in the court of law. Yeah. So it's certain things and certain ways you have to paint a picture to actually get what you want. Yeah. yeah, I mean, absolutely. And and sometimes it's it's even, you know, a lot of people are doing it to get seen because it's very divorce. Is, you would like when you get involved in a divorce situation, it's not it's never fast. It's, it's slow unless you guys are both on the same page. It's not a contested situation. It's uncontested. You guys are in agreement with certain things like, you know, best. That's a best case scenario where you yeah. don't you just have you already come up with an agreement, you sign paperwork and you're able to move on. Um, but if it's contested, it's never, it's never a fast process. It's, yeah. it's very, very slow. And so there's people that you will write different things in order to be seen 
in order to get in front of a judge to get it to a place of resolve or to to get it to a place so that it's over. You know, there's people that will do that or lawyers that will do that or whatever. You know, you'll there's it's such a complex and com, you know, can be a convoluted process. And there's so many different nuances to it. But ultimately, when you involve lawyers in and you start, you know, y'all are they're exchanging words, you're getting mad at what they're saying, they're getting mad at what you're saying. It gets uglier, it gets ugly. It's almost like you have somebody that's can you believe what they just said? Like you're 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 like, what? I can't believe that I did all this stuff. How could they want? You know, you just get your it's an ins it's like an instigation of pre-existing issues and just on the the highest of levels. Yeah. And it's not a it's like a slow burn. And so there's a lot of different reasons why they put different wording outside of just winning. It's it's about being seen and being getting it over with. Mm. Cause some people just want to get it over with. And I, you know, I totally understand that. You don't want to be sitting in a, in a process for two, three, four, five, six years. You know, you want to, if you've made that decision, you want to kind of get, move on and move, move through it. But, you know, so there's different reasons why people do that. Okay. Can we close out that poll right there? Yeah. And before we move on to the next thing, I want to see what the people are, where we at with the uh, percentages So there. check this out, guys. Are you considering going through or have experienced a divorce? We got over 250 votes and 57% of people say yes. 57% 57 of people? Yeah. That's a lot of people that's in that place right now, y'all. That's crazy. So divorce is really an option. No, it really is an option. And it really is a thing. That, and that lets us know how many people are, you know, either married or recently divorce that's currently in here in this chat and um you know what i want to do here by the way before we move on guys please by the way help us too because this is how we spread it get us to 400 likes real quick i need everybody to close down the chat and actually go about hitting that like button for me please but me me too but unfortunately myself personally mm -hmm. i have also i haven't been through a divorce as a husband but i have been through the divorce as a child mm -hmm. and I, I know what that's like. Me and my little brother back there working the camp, both. We've been in a home like that. How have you saw that it affects the children? Or have you, or is there a way? Because what I want to figure out is how to mitigate the effects as much as possible, right? So just personally though, how have you seen, have you have you seen that personally affect? your child in, in, in any way in particular? Yeah. I mean, um, there's no real, y'all are coming at me today. <laughs> like, oh God, y'all got, got me crying on this daggone thing. Um, yeah. I mean, my, I, uh, I filed, I filed when she was about, you know, when she was about two. And so, I mean, you know, she hasn't really known like her, us together um, okay. and her now that she's, you know, yeah. she's never really seen in her memory and being able to speak and walk and talk and like cognitively her processing. Um, she, she doesn't, I don't think we've been more apart than we've been together in her life. She's five now. Yeah. Um. So I don't think she has any like recollection of like us together. I would say that it's affected me more her not having her father like in the house like that it's affected me more seeing her used to something i didn't want her to get used to mm. I didn't want her to get used to you know i was raised in a divorced home mm -hmm. and it was a high conflict divorce and I didn't want that for her. So I think it's harder for me because I made the decision. You know, I made that decision. And gosh. <clears throat> Take your time. You know, at the end of the day, like, I don't think people understand like how like when you see a child like, and she has a father and I have a really great relationship with my dad. I have a great relationship with my stepdad. I have 
great relationships with the men in my life. And, um, you know, I, I, I always wanted for her to have that relationship and she does. Her father loves her. You know, we've been able to go to like everything that's ever needed, like for her, like medically and things like that. If he needs to show up to, a, you know, a doctor's appointment, he'll, he'll go things like that. But you know, it, it, it's, it's hard, you know, it's, it's a hard process to, you know, I, I would love for us to come to a place of, of peace for sure. I would love that. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I'm, I don't, I don't even want to paint myself like I'm a victim because I'm not a victim. I'm just hurting that it, I made a decision that does affect her. And it, and it does weigh on her. And that's why I would say to any person, any woman, any man, if you're highly emotional and you're all over the place and you're going left and right, like even the Bible tells us not to do that. Like that's not the place to make decisions. Yeah. The Bible says to take a beat and have wise counsel and to go through certain processes before you make de decisions. Like there's a way to go about it, you know, and I don't think we think enough about, we're so mad and we're so angry. We're not thinking about how it affects the kids that are involved. We're not thinking about that, you know? And when I was mad, I wasn't thinking about how like her not having her dad in the house would affect her and like getting used to seeing a mom on her own. When I know the value of having a man and having a man present in the house. Cause my stepdad was around and my stepdad is like, and my, my dad, like, you know, was around, you know, in my life, but he wasn't in the house, but my stepdad was there and I was able to see how, um, a, a woman and a man and coming together and that partnership and like having a teammate and all that other stuff, like what that taught me about a, what it meant for a man to, tr how to treat a woman. Yeah. But also gave me a man that loved me and yeah. loved me in such a way that when I when I started dating and when I started doing certain things, I had a certain standard already. And that doesn't necessarily mean that she doesn't have that standard, you know, because he's present. But is he as present? I mean, he can't be, you know, because of the nature of what he does. Yeah. And so there's a, there it's, it's tough. It's a tough, it's tough, man. It's tough being on, it's tough, like trying to do it on your own. You know, he, I'm, he's present and I'm not going to paint a picture that he's not present and he's doing what he needs to do as far as that's concerned with her. But what I am saying is regardless, you have a working single mom and a child that's watching her do that. And so when you make that decision, you've got to think about that. You've got to think about how that, that impacts her, you know? And I, I think about that every day. So I'm, I'm very curious because you got this image that you might have of your, <laughs> wait, we need to take a little breather, <laughs> go, go into some announcements. No, 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 no. You can keep going, look, I, I can handle pressure. Okay, go good. Ahead. So you got this image that you have personally of your ex-spouse. Right. You got an image that you have to help curate with the legal team, the attorney. Right. And then you also have yeah. this image that I'm sure your daughter has of her father and kind of Absolutely. what she thinks. Yeah. So how do you separate those things? Like, how do you still have what you think, whether it's frustrations or, you know, mm -hmm. otherwise still have this thing that you got to get it together to speak to the attorney, but then also have to paint the father for your daughter Absolutely. in the best way possible. hundred percent. During the, the process, more or less, um, of divorce, I think is very critical. I want to make sure I say this. Women, I don't care how old your kids are. But I think somebody's knocking. No, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, somebody knocking. Old building. Uh, yeah, yeah like, like, oh. um, but, uh, so, it's very, the kids are not your therapists. I don't care how old they are. They're not old enough to be able to help you process any of the emotions that you're feeling. Um, they should not be involved. Um, and I, I already 
kind of felt that way because I've gone through it. I had already been a child of divorce. My parent, my mom and my dad um, were divorced when I was young, very young as well. And so I already knew I didn't want my daughter to be <laughs> like talked to about her dad. I didn't want to cause a conflict. I didn't want her to come home and not feel like she can be open about whatever was going on. I didn't want her to feel like, oh, this could be this or that. I didn't want, I didn't want that for her. I wanted her to feel the freedom. So a lot of it is me like A, having a therapist. B, like if I'm feeling really feeling emotional and I'm really feeling like overwhelmed, I'll you know, I will make her dinner. I will do everything for her. And if I'm like really, really, really feeling that way, I will go into a bathroom. I will cry. Mm. Number one time she, I had set her all the way up and I thought she was like, okay. And I was just, it was a day where I was like more towards the beginning phases of this, where I was really struggling just like, because you're, you, I love, I love this person that I'm fighting. And I feel like at this point, I can't be, we can't figure this out. We have, we have done way too much. We have gone too far. Like, so I'm like feeling these feelings of conflicting emotions. And I, and we're, I go into a bathroom and I start crying. I'm just like, like, God, what, what is going on? Like, I need you right now. Like, I'm just crying. And she was in her room. I thought she was minding her business. And she starts knocking on the bathroom door, but I already had closed the bathroom door. So she couldn't like, you know, like pop in on me or anything like that. And, but I, I heard her and I was like, okay, let me just, let me get it together. Wash my face. Okay. You got five seconds because baby, you know, and she was like, mommy, were you crying? And like, I remember saying to myself, like, no, no, mommy, mommy wasn't crying. Mommy was praying. Mommy was praying to God. And, you know, mommy gets emotional when she prays to God. So, you know, that's that's just, you know, normal. And so I, you know, go out and, you know, whatever. I clean up and do different things so that she's feeling more normal and comfortable. She remembered that. Like, she remembers that to this day. Wow. Yeah, she remembers that. That was the one time that she caught me slipping <laughs> with my emotions. She caught me slipping. I was, I was like, cry, like crying, crying in the bathroom. And like she, yeah. It's interesting because you, so when you filed for divorce, by the way, mm -hmm. were you guys both still living in the same house? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend that if somebody files for divorce, they try to separate their living situations when that happens? Yes. Absolutely. I can only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. I would okay. So this is what I would uh, would recommend somebody to do something called, which was the, what a marital therapist had called and had said was to do an intentional separation. That's what our marital therapist said. Okay, he was like saying that you should maybe retain separate housing arrangements, but intentionally date and still go to therapy and like kind of like kind of ease the tension, but like kind of work on your issues, but still having the ability to like go to your own spaces with the intention of getting reconciling and getting back together. That's what, that's what he was saying was probably if someone was going to separate, it should be for that way. Not we separate, we divorce, we live together because that's, that's toxic. You know, the, you have, you especially you've got attorneys and you're going back and forth and you're not on the same page. Like, that's a that is that is going to bring about a toxic living situation, oh. whether you realize it or not. Like that is going to be very negative. And then as much as that might be convenient for you or financially good for you, kids can feel like we can't act like they don't feel or experience all the emotions. My daughter in that instance felt my energy and I was trying to hide it. And I, I thought I was doing a good job, I, you know, like so. I, again, like we can't ignore that and get so like, oh, well, this is what we want to do. If, you, if you're going to kind of figure out your differences and I can understand your energies being so big that it's too hot. It's too much to be in one house together. You know, I understand that. And I think that there's a certain level. Maybe sometimes you need cooler heads need to prevail. We can come together with a mediator or somebody that we 
you know, at the time, you know, a marital therapist, a family friend, somebody that you trust, whatever that may be. And then kind of come together on the other, you know, like that. But if you're divorcing, you've made a decision to divorce, which I think people threaten that way too much. It's, it's not a casual situation. This is like, this is one of the, it's too, it's too casual. It's way too casual. It's not a casual decision. It's not a casual de decision to get married and it's not a casual decision to end it. Mm. And I'm saying from the other side of the pain and the regret that I've met that people have had about act the actual decision. Like, oh, you know, it wasn't so bad. I sh maybe I should have worked it out. Maybe I should have done X, Y, and Z. I hear, I hear so many people, men and women, that end up having these regrets on the other side. I'm just like, fight as long as you possibly can. Yeah. Fight for, I mean, when I feel like when God taps you out, you ain't got to ask nobody whether this is the right decision or not. Like if God is moving you in a different path, you're going to have peace and clarity. When you're feeling chaotic and you're all over emotionally, you don't know if you should or you shouldn't. God is not a God of chaos or confusion. So you already know that that decision isn't coming from God if you're all over the place emotionally and you confused and you this and you that and your emotions are all over the place. Jesus was asleep on the boat. There's a storm that was brewing. He was asleep. You know, even in the garden, he didn't he didn't go and pursue purpose until he had cried out and, and, and prayed, sweat the blood down. And then he was like, OK, God's got me strengthened. They said angels strengthened him. And then he was able to turn around and, 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 and face purpose. He had to get that out. He had to get to a cooler place before he was able to to fulfill purpose on this on on well, what I believe this earth. Yeah, And so I, I think that in all things, like if you're fighting like that and you're doing the, like, no, nah, I'm sorry. I probably went off topic, but you, no, that's what yeah. I'm going to do. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, to your original question that there's not a more toxic situation I could think of than to be living in the house with someone that I'm divorcing. It's a lot of actually ladies in the chat that's saying that they're, are currently, you know, living in the in the house with Jesus their ex, and Lord, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, like I've I've actually mm -hmm. I know of women who are like currently living in the house with exes, <laughs> like you know, and 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 being in those situations. And I I don't know if it I could probably say it will probably most likely always come back to money. Yeah, of course, I, I get that. You I know, understand. it's probably money that puts people in those in those situations. But I can't, but again, you're I'd right. I'd be living with a family member. I would be figuring, I would be doing yeah. something. Like I would not be, if your intention, that's the, that's my thing. Is your intention to get back together? Is your intention to actually divorce or end the relationship? I just don't see how that makes things better. Yeah. I, I don't, if you're, excuse me, going through an active divorce process, I don't see how us living together is going to bring about if we're if I'm this angry and I'm this hurt, I don't know how us being in the same household is going to be conducive to anything healthy. I want I want to know this too because we we gonna <clears throat> get to the initiation hotline in just a second. But the first thing I want to know though is um you know in in this process though because that's what we're talking about now is actually going through that process. Yeah of divorce, you know, when, when you filed, can you think back to what was probably one of the hardest parts of that process? Of the divorce process? Yeah. Can you, can you, do, do you remember? Oh my gosh. I think everything about it was hard. I think everything about it was hard, but, um, gosh, I think, I mean, the hardest part we, when we actually had to go to court and fight for our when we fight for our uh, positions, that was probably the hardest part was that, like just going to court and like going through this whole ring of morale with someone you said I do to. Yeah. Like that's probably the, was the hardest part, you know, like if you're able, most, most divorces settle out of court, ours did not. 
And so our situation ended in a courtroom with the judge, you know, and finalized it for us. But um, yeah, no, it's a um, that was the toughest part. It was a trial. Okay. But, I can see that though. I can absolutely see how, mm -hmm. especially if you've been separated from someone, these feelings uh, are are brewing and growing, and now you're facing each other on yeah. these terms. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I 100% can see that. And um, y'all, listen, to be honest, I see that the, by the way, we almost got a thousand people in the room, <laughs> and it's a lot of people in here. The, the chat is really going crazy. Oh, I and know it it's, is. Because it's <laughs> this is a powerful conversation right yeah. now. Like, because like you said, I think a lot of people have a cavalier, casual mindset about having a divorce. Yeah. And especially women. And that's why I'm doing this. Man. And I mean, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this for any other reason, but like what the, I have been very careful about wanting to, you know, keep it, keep my perspective, like out of protection for, this is my child's father. I have a lot of respect yeah. for him. I'll always, there will always be a part of me that will love him because of, like what we share together um, and the child that I look at every day and like, ooh, she looks like him, you know, <laughs> she looks like us yeah. and hit, like, you know. It's, wow. Yeah. 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 It's just beautiful. That is girl. something that is, that is something that it's, it's a reminder every time you look at your baby girl. Oh yeah. She has this beautiful smile and um, it just reminds me of like the happier time, you know, but it's not, it's not nothing. Like I look at, I'm like, it's not negative for me. It's, it's a, you know, more of a positive reminder of something. Hold on, wait, wait. Let, let, let me ask you this real quick too. Oh, I mean, the way this conversation Jesus sounded, God. I just, I just want to know. Where are we think, going, Lord? Where are we going? Right, right where we need to go. I don't okay? want to go there. I don't want to go. Because <laughs> I don't know if you're reading my mind right now. No, I don't know where okay, you're going okay. actually. But I want to ask you this. Sure. With the person you've evolved and grown into, mm -hmm. assuming that your past partner is open to it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm playing. Can we edit that out? <laughs> I didn't even say that. No, well, well, I, I, I think we, we, well, wait, before it. you ask that question, because I want to make sure we're not being coy, because there's still people that's very confused in the chat right now. Yeah. Because your ex-husband, Tyrese Gibson, oh, Jesus. Hollywood. Put his whole name out there? Well, I mean, because people, <laughs> I, I mean, people are very confused. They're like, yo, what, what's going on? So Tyrus Gibson, Hollywood actor, that's who your ex-husband is, just, just so people can understand the relevancy we'll skip singer of this conversation. Like, Hollywood actor, singer, a little bit of everything, celebrity, everything. So, yes. And the, the reason that I say that is because it's very important that people understand that because people are going through divorce, right? Not necessarily a divorce has been high profile. And I say high profile is anything that continuously to come across my timeline is high profile. Also, it's, it's amplified, right? When you got two successful people, you got these things going on in the media. It's everything. The divorce proceedings is amplified. The, the scrutiny is amplified and everything else in between. So I just want to make sure that people understand this is not just the average divorce. This is a divorce that is loaded with all kinds of things that the average person wouldn't even, I'm sure, have to deal with or even the, the stomach yeah. and to, to deal with. So I want to make sure that people actually understood what the conversation you know what's the foundation you, you, of the conversation you're going right through this pa this pain on stage right and no, you if you lying. will you're and that's lying. that's like most people at least get the benefit of going through this pain in the privacy of their mm -hmm. own homes and families and, and communities but right. you had to really experience this in, in front of the world which i agree is a, a different is a different type um of of experience that most people would not necessarily have to go through but i'm curious to know you know assuming that you know, this person was open to it. Are are you now in the spirit of potentially even being able to rekindle a relationship like like rekindle that relationship? Is is your spirit in that place, or is could it ever go back to that place? Oh my gosh, she was asking me this. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can we get an edit? Uh, <laughs> oh, is that a hard Jesus. question? It is. It's a it's it's loaded because of the fact that there's been so much that's happened. You know, like there's been so much that's occurred. Um, okay. It's my daughter's father. So I would, I would say this, I would say that if we were both going to show up and we were both going to fight for it equally and sacrifice equally, like, you know, things that I needed and, you know, things that, you know, he needed, I wasn't perfect. Come on. Yeah. Um, your girl ain't perfect. 
Um, so I, I would I would say that if 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 we were both willing to fight and we were both willing to do certain things, then yes. Something about that actually makes me very happy. No, I don't know if that makes. I don't, me happy. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like, if it's if it's it's my child, like, you know, no one wants a broken family. No, it, one no, wants that's that. exactly Facts. that's what so, it is for me. Yeah, like if it was something that it was like it was if it was a situation, you have to hear me, sir. Excuse me, you have to hear me all the way. <laughs> you have to hear me all the way. Okay, okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay, so my my whole point is that if. If we were both in, a, if we were both sacrificed, like there was things I asked for, those things were worked on and we were working towards those things. I was working whatever he may have come up and came up with that he felt like I needed to work on, I, whatever. If we were both willing to work, then yeah. That's a hell of a, listen. Or do the work. Yeah. That's all I needed to know. So what we're gonna no, do now? No, we're not gonna do that. No, no, no. no, no, no. I don't need to do. Here's what we're we're not we do. We about call. to know. Yeah, we we, we about to go to the we're initiation to hotline. Okay, so let's get I to know it. When, uh, line blink. What I want y'all to do, guys. Okay, is I want you guys first of all before we take these calls, I need you guys to help us. We almost got a thousand people in here, y'all. Can y'all please help us get to at least five hundred and fifty likes right now? That's like just over half the room. Close your chats if you're on your phone. Hit the thumbs up button. Please, right now. And you already better have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, I need you to be there for me as well. <laughs> I'm okay? mad at you. Because what I want y'all to do, I want somebody who is either considering, I want questions from people who are considering the divorce process or actively going through it right now that has questions. I want those people to call up here in particular because that's what we're talking about here tonight. Okay, so I want those people to call up here and chop it up with us we just put the number up on the screen here. So the calls that come in, I'm, I'm looking forward to taking them. And I, I really want to hear some, I always want to hear from the brothers because, you know, the, the ladies, y'all go ahead and always show love and call in. But I, I'm hoping we can hear from our brother tonight as well. Yeah, call me. Call us. Yeah, I like that. Shout out to you. But no, Sam, thank you so much, man. You, you have really, made, you have literally, like, I hope you, this has been a lot. I ask hard questions. Listen, we not, we don't do well, that I, surface I, I level here. I think Tarshan been taking it easy tonight, to, to we, be honest. What? He been taking it easy. Wow, he yeah. lo he is absolutely well, not, not false. Inten not intentionally. Deception yeah. indicated. <laughs> That's deception. In There's no way. No, I mean, is this real? See, here's the thing. I don't ask. Oh. I don't. Ask, I don't ask surface level questions. So, so I you mean, feel like he's been taking it easy off. He been taking it easy on you. So time. here's what I want to do. I, but I, we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna make sure we don't. Let take me know when they answer it. Me no one has ever asked. Me. Oh yeah, that's what happened. You are you are credible because I, I think you've experienced a lot of things. Um, well, I mean, one, you got the, the relationship commentaries on point, but two, you experienced something that you know a lot of people are facing, but just not at the same level. Like you know, people get money, but not at the same level. People have issues and challenges, but not at the same <laughs> level. So I think that um your perspective is, is very unique and needed for sure. Are they on? Are they on? Are they on call? Okay, welcome to Hardly Initiated. We got somebody on the line here. Please give me your age. Your location and your hello. Hey, what's up? Welcome yes. to Harlan Initiated. Age, location, and question. Hi, good evening, um, guys. Um, so my name is Anastasia. I am 37 and I'm calling from Arizona. So um let me pause this. My question is um for the lady. And it will be, so now that she is um, a single, well, divorced, mm -hmm. and she has a child, what is her posture uh, in the dating world? Does she feel like, is it easy for her to date, you know, being that she is divorced and a uh, single mom now? Or how does, how does that work, you know, being that, you know, she's, you know, after the divorce process? That's a good question. I'm curious, real quick, just for some context. How long have you been divorced, by the way? Goodness. Um, um, about seven years now. Oh, you've been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we, we weren't even talking to you. Not you. Not you. Not you. <laughs> but oh. the context as well. So, yes, Samantha Lee, is. how long have you been divorced? Um, gosh, this is a complicated question because just it's been a lot. Um, I would say we went through the, the trial last year. So, I would say officially over a year. So, we're over a year. We've been separated for almost four. That's no time. Yeah, we, I mean, we're talking about, talking about the final, but we've been separate. We have not been together. Got it. Yeah. In three and a half years. That's a long process. Yeah. So we like, 
you know, so I, I would say that, yeah. So it's been over, it's been a, like a year and a couple months since the actual finalization, but we had a very contested situation. It was not a quick situation. So, you know, it was a long, you know, very long process. How does dating look like? <laughs> uh, you know what? Um, I, I like dating. Uh, dating has been fun. Uh, dating has been interesting. I've learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about, about other people. I've, I've been, I mean, I've enjoyed dating. Um, what I will say is that with a child absolutely ups the ante makes me extremely picky. Um, mm -hmm. so pickier than I was even prior to getting married. Um, extremely picky. Um, and I'm very big on, uh, on leaning in, or I've learned to lean in on my discernment. Um, when it comes to the people that come into my life, like I like literally getting on a call with somebody and feeling the speed, like my spirit, like literally praying before the call and be like, okay, God, let me know if it's even something I need to be even going out to or doing, you know, and I will say no, like I'm good with cooking at home, watching my shows and doing my thing. Like I'm good with that. Um, so I would say, it, is it fun? Yes, I've enjoyed the dating process. I've learned a lot about myself in the dating process. You know, I, you know, did date somebody seriously after um, situation, after my my last situation, my marriage ending, um, and that wasn't that was an interesting process as well. But I would say, you know, it's an it's a it's a different it's a process. What I will say, sorry y'all, I'm long winded. Um, is that I think when you start dating after a divorce, you date with the intention of like making it work because you've been trying to make something work. That's what you're accustomed to. You're accustomed to trying to make something, you know, you trying to make this work, but sometimes you try to make it work with the wrong people and you can end up wasting your time. Yeah. So I think that that was one thing is learning how to date like a single person instead of dating like a, someone who's just married. I get it. <clears throat> I get it. Anna, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you as well. You go ahead and you have an amazing night. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get somebody guys. else up on Thank here. Thank you for um, it, it, all with the content you guys continue to put out. Amazing. Thank you. Have we appreciate night. you. No, we appreciate you, Anna. You have, been, you have a blessed night, okay? You do the same. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Well, I'm just very curious. What, what makes it more trickier? Is it uh, your your past relationship and the guys coming in knowing who your ex-husband is or the the social status that you have now online? Oh, okay. So which one is harder for me to overcome? Yeah. Mm. The latter. Mm. My, Because my, it, you know, most of the people, not, not most, but like a lot of the people that I have like seen or dated or anything like that. Some of them may be familiar with what, who I'm, I, I'm associated to, to, or was once associated to, because right. I don't associate myself. Um, I try to be very careful. I told you guys before, like to disassociate myself. I wanted to build something for me right. and not attach to him at all. Um, because you know, that like he deserves to build his own thing. He earned that. He, he built that up for himself. Um, <clears throat> So I will say the latter is harder for me to overcome because I, I don't know if you guys get this, but it sometimes it's like, oh, I don't know what your motive is. So it could be the, the former, which you brought up is like, you know me or you know of me from this situation right. or you know of me from this situation. I don't know what your motive is. Mm. Like, are you somebody you might be, maybe you're successful in the business space, but you, you try to get an online presence <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you may have. I get it. A lot of different alts here, or you're just trying to make a splash. You know, Hello? who knows? You you worry about people's motivations. Yeah, I think more or less. But I think the former is a, a little harder because I think you know people. You know they can. Um, I, no, no, actually, let me take it back. I think about it. It's the it's it's my ex. My ex is the harder one. Okay. <laughs> he is the harder one. The, the former one is cool. I feel like people should take more of what I post seriously, honestly. Okay. When I date, because I post how I feel. Like I'm a y'all, I don't know if y'all know me by now, but I'm a very emotional, like I used to gonna say how I feel. And so I think some people think that it's like, oh, you post this, but what's up? 
And it's like, no, nah, I really, I really stand on what I say. Mm. Like, I'm not just posting this for kicks and giggles. I believe that. And so I think that people don't pay enough attention to that. But I do question more motivation sometimes when people do like come, you know, try to try to like court me or date me or something like that. As far as the former, it's a little harder because, yeah, you know, you you don't know how somebody wants to know. You're like, oh, are you the person that he was, you know, so what's up? What's going on with you? <laughs> yeah. You the one he, you know, talking about? Oh, okay. What's going on with you? You know, like you know, things like that. I don't know. That's your old man voice. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's up? What's going on so with now, you? <laughs> now we know the age ranges. Right, right. Hey, but look, oh, I think, your I, girl got a large one. I think we got a, I got I think we got somebody here that want to ask a question. Oh, so look, welcome to Hardly Initiated. <laughs> Give me your age, your location, and your question. Hey, good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, my name is, I'll call myself Billy. I'm from the East Coast, and I'm over 40. What up, Billy? Hey, hey, everything's good. Hey, um, first of all, I appreciate the show tonight. Appreciate the young lady that's on the show. Uh, I, I would like to make a statement. No statement, um, Billy. No yeah. statement. No you statement. got a question Questions for us, Billy? Powerful. This is a powerful statement. Questions only, Billy. All right. So my my question is this, is that if pain was part of the process and you understood that pain was part of the process, would you have gotten a divorce because of the pain? What'd you say, Samantha Lee? I knew that pain would be a part of the process. You mean the so to to clarify, are you saying the pain that I experienced during the process, like now experiencing that, was it worth it? Yeah. So my I, I guess to clarify what I'm saying is is that no marriage is easy. No. Right. And so pain is part of the marital process. Mm -hmm. You know, God says, and the two shall become one. Mm -hmm. I think what we fail to realize, and, I, and I'm talking from a standpoint, I'm going through a divorce and I've been married for over 30 years. So, so I understand this field. I think what happens was- Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Give me, I want to just clarify your question so we can get to the next caller. Yes. So, so what I'm saying is pain is part of the marital process. A lot of people get divorced because of the pain, because of the differences. But if that's part of the process, shouldn't you stick with it through that process? Well, I'm, I, in many ways, I think that's what we've covered here, brother. So here's what I want to do. you Because I could definitely tell you came up here more with a statement mindset <laughs> than a question mindset. Hey, I came up here to preach, brother. No, I, brother. No, I, I, can, I can tell. But listen, brother, I, I want y'all to know, I want y'all, I really want to come up here with questions for our guests moving forward. So I appreciate your statement and I appreciate where you're coming from. And that's exactly what we're attacking here tonight. And I think you probably might have might have missed the top of the conversation because we covered that. But make sure you go ahead and check the beginning of the conversation out. But we're going to get to the next question, brother. OK, I appreciate your call. All right. Not a problem. Thank you. Let's appreciate do it. it, Billy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I will say that Tyshawn is a lot more patient than me because, guys, if you come on with a statement without a question, I am telling Delano to hang up the phone. Guys, your age, your location, your name, and a question. That's what we need. Yes, yes, please, guys. Definitely. So we got another one coming in. Let's see if this person going to get it right. All right. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. Give me your age, your location, and your question. Antoine, I am 49, and um, I'm in the Baltimore, Maryland area. What's up, Antoine? What's what up? What up? What up? Yeah, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Um, hi, Sam. What's up? Uh, just had a wait. Now I know earlier you made a statement uh, about uh, if there was a chance of reconciliation, um, but my question to you is. Um, is that, and then that you don't want to break up the household and break up the family, and you love to see the family together. But my question to you is, was will that make you happy? That's a great question. She's thinking on that one, brother. Good question. That's a great question. Would that make me happy? 
I think I define happiness different yeah. now. Um, I think that if we were both, <clears throat> if we were both to fight for our relationship, um, and we have to overcome a lot, I mean, it'd be a lot of it. Um, it'd be, it would probably not make me, I, <laughs> here's my thing. I think that happiness is a temporary emotion. You can go in and out of temp. You can be, I can be happy this morning and I can be sad tonight just by some type of condition changing. I, I focus more on joy because that's something that lasts right. even when the situation doesn't change. So I would, I would say to you that would it make me, make me happy? I'm sure at times it would make me happy and I'm sure at times it would make me sad. I'm sure at times it would make me, you know, whatever. I, I don't really, I mean, I don't, yeah, obviously this is a big hypothetical because it's a lot that's happened. Um, but in me, me purely saying that was just me saying that, you know, seeing the nature of what has happened thus far, the, the, the situation in and of itself, like I didn't, it's not about necessarily like happiness for me, if that makes any sense. It wouldn't be about me being happy because I'm sure there would be aspects of it that would make me happy, but there would be aspects. So we will want you to be happy, Sam. So that's important. Well, I understand that. I mean, I get that. I, I, I get that. I get that. Because if you're happy, then of course your daughter will see that and that will in turn make, you know, everything come full circle. Everyone will be happy because she would see her mom as happy. Yeah, but I, yeah. But I also think that it's important for her. Like it was, it's not so much, it's not so much because if, if we both were fighting for the relationship and we both put a lot of things aside, because I'm not just saying that he do he does and I don't, this, that, and the third. Cause I can own that. I got some things I got to put aside um, as far as like my attitude, my behavior. Um, if we both were willing to work on it, I think that there would be aspects of it that would be more, it would be more than happy. I'd be overjoyed because I'm able to make our family work. Man, listen, I appreciate you call, calling up with that question, brother. We're going to get to the next caller, but I appreciate that one. That was a great question. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. See no, you tomorrow, Sam. No doubt. See ya. Wait, did that man say see you tomorrow? He's probably seeing my live tomorrow. Wait, oh, like that. okay. So, wait, tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm who okay. the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. what, what, what I go live on Wednesday. I go live on Wednesday at 7, uh, <laughs> at okay. 7 p.m. That was interesting. That was interesting. That was somebody from hey, Game Changer yo, Nation. I'm going to be okay. honest. I'm going to be honest. First of all, we don't it's something about the conversation, conversation of divorce that brings the brothers on. The brothers really lean we into the conversation. We talk about that, right? They love, they love the divorce because conversation. Y'all know how you know, I know these callings. It's usually a lot of ladies, but the brothers are really tuned in here today, which I appreciate the engagement from our brothers. We, we do got a call because I got a super chat just came in. Oh no, nah, go ahead. Read your super chat. We Shout out to Nicole. Ooh. Nicole has been a minute since you sent over the super chat. Shout out to Nicole. She says, What is Samantha's take on premarital counseling? Is that something she did prior to getting married, and would she consider doing it in the future? This is Nicole. Yeah, this is okay. Nicole. Okay. Um. So, uh, you know what? We we did do it. Um, we did do premarital counseling. I would say that it's something that you should absolutely do. I think ours should have been longer. Um, I think people don't know. I was married in six months. Engaged in, engaged in two and a half, married in six. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I met him in July. I was married in February. Um, and, and so um, I was, I was, I got married very, very, very quickly. Um, and I think that I would definitely like probably have taken more time with premarital counseling. I think we kind of like kind of rushed through the process a little bit. I think we should have, we should have spent more time in there. That's interesting. So let me ask you, what is a healthy length of premarital counseling? Like, what's a good length of time to spend in there? We only spent one session. We only had one session. In one session? Yeah, don't do this. So what? Uh, y'all tell y'all make me tell the truth. Today. She was she was smitten. Yo, I was in. Oh, when I say I was in love, I was in love. Y'all don't even know how I love. <laughs> so mom, it was just a formality at that point. My mom was like, "What is wrong with you?" Like, what are you doing? Like, you're about to, like, cause I was, I got, I met, like, 
I met him. I was like, you know, okay, I'm leave my I like left my career. You know, I went to UGA, got my this degree, was working, everything like that. And I was like, you did all this to work and you know, finally get to where you're at. You're gonna leave everything, you're gonna leave the state, you're gonna leave everything behind, you know, your career, your dreams, you're leaving all that behind. Like, but I love him though. Like, I love him. I've never felt this. Like, I was just so I was, yeah, I was very in love. I was, I wasn't, you know. Oh my gosh, I know I see it. What? You hot, you hot, you high emotion. I see it. I am. I'm a very highly emotional. I person. see it though. I'm, no, that makes sense. It makes sense. So there was. I mean, it was really. First of all, ain't no damn counseling going on in one session. It Here's ain't no. Here's the it thing. Ain't. We saw. We sat down with our pastoral counselors. Okay. Our, of of his church. It was his, his the church that he he was at. We sat down with pastoral leadership. Remote, very. There's a lot of respect. And they they drop gems. And if if we're being, if I'm being honest, there were some th things that they said in that, that if we had employed those skills in our marital process, we probably would still be married, Yeah. but we did not. And so I will say that they definitely dropped some gems. Do I think we needed more? Absolutely. I think we needed way, we needed like a real, like couple more sessions for us, to like practice certain things. But by that point, I mean, we didn't really have like major conflict. We hadn't had any of those things that, you know, more, you know, longer, more seasoned relationships have by the time they get married, you know, we had gotten married at six months, you know, six to seven months. So, you know, what was the rush? He wanted to get married. Okay. Yeah, he wanted to get married. Like he was just really excited about the actual process of like, it was excited about the process and, or just knowing that I'm now married. Is No, I wasn't, I wasn't pushing the marriage process. Okay. It was my, my, um, the man, man I was marrying wanted to get married. He was, he wanted to get married. Is that um, a red flag when the, the guy <laughs> pushes the marriage? <laughs> she <don't> crazy. Like <laughs> <laughs> she, I don't think it's a red, I thought it was, I thought it was an incredibly attractive. I thought it was an intentional guy that I felt like that was experienced. I felt like he knew what he want. You know, I, I felt How like old he was he at the time, by the way? So hold on. Because I think, I mean, the age, you know, maturity has a lot to do with how serious he'll be at, at a certain point in his life. I think it might, might have been 36 or 37. Yeah. I think he was like, yeah, I think he was about, I mean, he was like, he was like really trying, you know, he was really open about wanting to be married. I mean, he, um, he, he wasn't, when I met him, he wasn't like, trying i don't know if he, what he was doing but it i don't know what he what he had going on so i can't speak to that but i i know that he would wanted to be married he was very much like i want to be you know he told me he wanted a a partner he wanted that and in the first date he was like you're gonna be my wife you're gonna have my child you're gonna bounce back wow. okay okay let's let's look okay wait. wow let's put the onion back on this so is that not some level of love bombing <laughs> and, and, there is, and, and this thing, I'm asking because yeah, I, I would consider that 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 now, yeah. I mean, I think that if somebody was to tell me he did that, it wasn't future faking. It wasn't like he didn't do what he said he would was going to do. So I, I I mean, it it like I know sometimes the love bombing is like I don't have any intention to actually follow through with what I said I'm going to do. So you might okay. tell a girl all these things you selling her a whole bunch of dreams, hopes, goals, and you have absolutely no intention of doing that. But you're trying to manipulate her by utilizing those future plans to get her to do what you want her to do. Yeah, he actually did those. Things. Like it wasn't like a faking of any of any sort. And I think so that's the biggest that. part of love bombing. I, I I think that's the biggest part of love bombing is you kind of pull the rug from under them. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, love. He, you could if someone was telling me what was happening to me at that time, somebody could classify that as that. Yeah. Because it was a, it was a lot very fast. And I do think that, you know, but I wouldn't, like, a lot of times yeah. guys can be, a, guys can be very emotional too. And like, I mean, he's an R and B singer. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, no, no, that's a good point. Yeah, that, I mean, he's I mean, an artist, all, a creative. Okay. That, that's important. And, and I don't think the, the actual result of what happens at the end, the, the end of the relationship, it has anything to do with love bomb. And it's just a tactic. That you would actually employ, because because the reason I ask you that because this is the thing, you got a lot of men do that. A lot of men tell women what they want to do and how they're gonna do all these things for them. But I, I'm just curious from your personal perspective. 
and just let's just talk about from a general sense. Can we do general? Yeah. Let's talk about the <laughs> general I don't sense. Say that, yeah. General sense. You got a guy. Let's say this guy's just you know a guy, average salary, Home Depot employee. Mm-hmm. He says, "I love you. I want you to be my wife." Okay. And then you got this guy who's established financially. He's successful. He's got a bit of status. Whatever you know, most of your family in general would approve face value of that person being your future. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it the same? Do you qualify those same statements that I love you, I want you to be my wife, et cetera? Do you qualify those statements the exact same if it's an average man versus a quote unquote successful man? I took it generally. What I what do you mean by qualifying that? Like qualifying it as 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 love bombing or something like that, or like qualifying? Would you have it? evaluated those statements? Because you said in in your in your situation, mm-hmm. and we'll move that situation to the general sense, right? Yeah. Just in go your to situation, you're right. Go to general. <laughs> yeah. In your general situation, population. you weren't necessarily <laughs> trying to advance the relationship in that way. No, I was not. No, I was not trying to get married that quickly. No. Okay, so you got a guy that you two. Separate guys that you're dealing with. Yes. You're not trying to advance the relationship in that way. No. And I mean, I wanted to get married eventually. Uh, eventually. But I didn't want to get married. You know, I wasn't like. In three months. But you weren't. Ex- I was engaged in two and a half. Right. <laughs> yeah. But you weren't necessarily expressing, I'm ready to get married. Yeah. No. Okay. I was saying I wanted to get married, though. I was saying I want to get married one day. You know. But you weren't saying I want to get married to you, right? No. Okay. So you got an average man that you're not saying that you want to get married to, and you got this very successful man, mm-hmm. whatever we want to define as success. Sure. And he, both of them are giving you the same exact messages. Same messages. Do you evaluate those the same? No. Why? Because one, I would feel like hasn't had certain experiences that the other person clearly does. Like the reason why I took what he said, why, why, gosh, you're bringing it to specific he took it to general i i took it that way simply because i felt like he was so much he was so experienced he had seen so many different things i knew that about him it wasn't like something that i had like he you know you can meet somebody off the street right now and be like oh you know i don't been with a million and 27 women you know what i'm saying i've been around the block you know I mean? they heard about me in baltimore blah, 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 you know whatever But you don't know that. You don't know if that's true or not. You have no idea. But if it's somebody that you know has had a lot of experience because you know that they've had a lot of experience, you take what they say a little bit differently. And that's what I did. I took that a little bit more seriously just due to the fact that I knew that, okay, he probably does know what he wants. He he may have had swam 18 different seas, you know what I'm saying, And, and knew that this is what he wanted. Versus somebody that just kind of, you know, maybe hasn't had that much experience like me. Like that was from Georgia, just graduated with my master's from UGA, you know, yeah. like I, you know, so that's how. Hold on, hold on wait, we, we, this is going to be like the last one, by the way, but I actually think we have a caller online right now. Let me just make sure. By the way, welcome to Harley Initiated. Give me your age, location, as well as your question if you're on here. I am on here. Um, oh, you've been in here. Oh! He's no, no, no. She's not saved. We're coming right back. What's, Hello? You, you actually been on here for like 10 minutes. What's up with you? Give me your age, location, and your question. Age is 28. I'm in the DMV area. And the question is to Samantha. You always hear people say that the thing that leads to the end of a relationship is the red flag that you ignored in the beginning. Mm. Do you think there were any red flags that you ignored in the beginning that led to the end of your relationship? Do you think you guys have actually worked through some of those red flags since you answered yes to the reconciliation question earlier? Great show that, by the way, guys. Um, I'm going to hang up now and wait for the answer. Listen, great. That is the <laughs> prime example of how everybody needs to call. <laughs> Thank you so much. That Thank was excellent. You. Um, thank you for your question. So, um, first, is there things that I ignored in the beginning? Yes. Um, two, did we, did we work through them? No, that's that. I mean, that's part of my statement with the, when he asked me about reconciliation or if I would even consider it or be on any level, it was, uh, it was very much about us doing a lot of work. And so that would, we would have to, I mean, we haven't 
we're not there on any level right now. That was a very much a hypothetical and um yeah. But that was that was very much contingent upon work being done. Very much contingent upon work being done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. Okay. I want to, before I actually move on, by the way, and we are, we going to close out the initiation hotline, by the way. So thank you so much for the initiation hotline. And I know when the hotline bling. Yeah, but I want to, I don't want to leave that though, by the way. What, what, what exactly, by the way, Ryan? Yeah. So the reason I ask you that is because I think both men and women do this. I think when we get these messages that might not be kosher typically, but it comes in a better packaging, we tend to be more receptive of it. Now, I'm not saying that in this case, you, you in your case, I'm not talking about your case specifically. No, you can I go. just mean from a general sense. Sure. Right. So if I'm talking to my daughter, I'm counseling, you know, one of the ladies I'm talking to or, you know, a friend. Right. And they telling me about this guy mm -hmm. who they have not expressed that they wanted to advance the relationship with. And this guy hitting them with statements like i want you to be my wife mm -hmm. i'm falling in love with you mm -hmm. as early as two months i'm mm -hmm. going to tell them that they should be apprehensive about this guy mm -hmm. and i think that depending on the packaging of the guy mm -hmm. they're going to respond to me differently so can i say can i go interject there of course so of course. In, in my situation specifically there were people regardless apprehensive mm. like as i shared my mom was like what are you doing like it wasn't a situation where, oh, because it's a, a pretty packaging or a prettier packaging than somebody else, whatever. It was more, it, that didn't matter to the people that I mattered to. They still were apprehensive. I moved anyway. Um, and that's on me. But that was, that was my, there was a lot in the very beginning of the situation that I just had never experienced. I mean, I had never experienced before. I had never seen before. I had never, like, I just had never, like, I just, it was just, I, I can't, I can't really even put it into words, but as someone, like, for me experiencing it and, like, putting myself in that position, it just felt like, wow, this person's saying everything that I've ever wanted somebody to say. Like, this is somebody that's, they're, like, they're seeing my, you know, they're being so intentional. They're, like, you know, they, they remember this, they are doing that. They're getting, you know, like they're thinking about this. They're doing like, you know, talked about waiting till marriage, you know, things like that. Like I would never expect from that particular person, you know? So it was just like a, like, I didn't expect somebody to say like, okay, we gonna wait on the Lord. We gonna wait till we say I do to do this. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That's I not, get it. You know, to me, that was like, wow, like I wasn't meeting regular men saying, let's wait till marriage to consummate. Yeah. Like I wasn't hearing that from regular dudes. Yeah. So like when I saw that and I saw the intentionality behind it, I thought that that was kind of more where the fire was coming from, was like trying to do the right thing by God and things like that and kind of moving and streamlining the process in a more intentional way. That's what I assumed from the process. I didn't, I looked at it more in terms of like intentionality and and knowing what he wanted but i can see but it was to everyone's point it was something that a lot of people were unsure about during the process so if you if you could be at that point in time if you were like if you could like third party yourself almost and mm -hmm. like you could be your own therapist sure would you at that point talk your would you pretty much tell yourself if you can go back in time that you should not make that decision yeah okay not 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 like he wasn't not at that time not that fast like i would have probably no, no 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 okay let me actually go not not the marriage oh okay i'm talking about more so the divorce oh if I the take divorce you back to the divorce not the beginning part not the be oh. if like while you were in that place sure if you could then go back and talk to yourself would you tell yourself to not actually divorce? Not at that moment, no. Like at that moment, no, <laughs> I would not. I would, I would, if it was me talking to me in that moment, I'd be like, no, don't do this. Do you see how you're reacting to this? Like you're so emotional. You're, yeah. you're going, you're, you know, you're, you don't, you can, I can tell you don't have peace about this. Like I know that this is not where you're supposed to be right now. Yeah. Like you, you give it time, be more patient. Like, 
wait till the dust settles. I, I probably would have, I definitely would have told me in that moment, no. Got it. You know, it's interesting because I'm, I'm really shocked, honestly. At, uh, I never asked any, I don't know why you're the first person I just was inspired to ask if they would actually <laughs> p- potentially consider, uh, you know, you know, going back to someone that they divorced. Cause I think that's such a great question. And I think it's even more interesting that you said that you would, especially because of, you know, all well, of we the- have to give the conditional though. Like, no, 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 no. Assuming, no, that's fair. Yeah. Obviously conditionally based upon this person, but, but see most, I don't think, and I don't want to say most because I haven't asked this question, sure. but I can say a lot of people, even if I threw any level of condition on there, that they would even want to do that. That's ego. That's ego. I'm coming to you, like putting aside my ego and I practice doing that. Like ego would have me come up here and like pretend that, oh, well, all he did. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. Forget him. Blah, blah, blah. You know that that's what would ego would have me do. My ego, I have to I've had to leave my ego outside the room and and put her in her proper place. Um, because the reality of the situation is that my child's father, and despite everything, the biggest test that anybody in the Bible had to face was forgiveness. Joseph had to forgive had to forgive. Jesus had to forgive. That would forgive people that nailed him to a cross and still choose to die for those people. Like that's the ultimate, the ultimate test is, is forgiving and not forgiving people that are easy to forgive, forgiving people that may not even be sorry, you know, and choosing to love and do right by them anyway. It's easy to love in the Bible talks about it's easy to love those who are kind to you and loving and doing all these things to you. It says even even pagans do that, or even people that are not of the faith do that. But I call you to love those who are not good to you, who are who are appearing as enemies to you. That's what that's what God agape love does. Yeah. So I'm saying to this to you in a surrendered spirit that I know that the ultimate test of any person is forgiveness, and I'm not surprised with the nation that is struggling in so many different ways. And we're telling people to not forgive like why we're suffering in, in a marital God covenant. Mm. Like you have to have the principle, like I'll never forget this where everyone told me this. Shout out to you, him and Justine. Um, <clears throat> they said to me that you need, Justine sat, sat down, he sat down and he was saying to me that, you need to become professional forgivers. That the reason why their marriage has lasted so long is that they have employed the ability uh, of forgiving and they are professionals at it. And I I had never even seen that before. You know, I had never seen people forgive so quickly and so like as if it never happened. Okay, they argued, they moved on. Okay, who cooking? Da, da, da. You know, they just we're able to just kind of move through and forgive so easily. And we're being also raised in a culture that is teaching us to not forgive, to be separated, to leave, to break up, move with ego. Nah, he did that. Forget him. Oh, he didn't do this. Leave him alone. Leave her alone. Do that. Like we're, we're, we have so much uh, separation language, so much, you know, not to be together language. The, the enemy literally working and being divisive in his abilities to be able to separate us and keep us not together when we were built for attachment. But anyway, besides the point, my whole point is that they taught, I think that when you're talking about forgiveness and in the spirit of forgiveness and the things that I've tried to grow in, I would absolutely like, if, if I am called to forgive, if God is calling me to forgive somebody in my life, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be obedient. I don't care what people think about me. I'm obedient to my God. I hold myself accountable to him. No, I get it. I get it. No, and, and, Professional forgivers. I've I've never heard that. I like that. I like that term. Rev running Justine Sim. See, that's the thing, man. It's like as men, I know it's I can only imagine like with us as men, we try to be strong all the time. Mm-hmm. 
And again, you had your situation, it, everything about it, like Ryan said earlier, was just amplified. It was on stage. Yes. And the, the problem, we like we got to see some ugly moments of that situation, especially we all seen, I mean, Tyrese break down in front of the world. And I would, that was hard for everyone to watch, especially a man. People kind of memed it out, but I, I didn't think that was memeable. I, I thought that was really like, that was like, like a, a man in a vulnerable place. And it felt like not having somebody else to speak to or vent to. So we go online with that. And for, and for clarity, before Tarshan continues, what was y'all's relationship status when that occurred? We were married. Got it. And I'm, I'm, the thing about it is when typically, I think a lot of us men are scared to be vulnerable in that way because of the brand we'll have with our woman. I, I don't think the, our woman looks at us as strong as we were, especially if we express that level of vulnerability. When when that took place, did like what were your thoughts? Like how how did you feel about it at that point in time? If you could take me back to that, I can't really. I mean, it was a hard time. It was a very very challenging time for him, for us, for the entire situation. I mean, he was being uh, accused of something and not able to see his child at that time or, you know, the things that were people already know about. I want to dig back into that, but um, I think a, a lot of me wanted to help and I couldn't. So I think a lot of me was like feeling very helpless and like desiring to want to save somebody from something I had no power to save them from. Even though y'all wasn't in the best space, no, we were married. We were like together, together then. Okay, like we weren't. There was no. Um, that was when that that video came out. That was in 2017. We were married in 2017. I, I don't think we have proper context, so <laughs> that had nothing to do with your situation. No, no, that had nothing to do with. That was a prior his um prior situation. Got it. And you didn't? Did you view him any differently after that situation happened? As far as from a state of like, just. As far as just just in, in in the sense of being a man, if that will, like no no his strength. no 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 I I didn't I didn't look at him like he experienced a lot during that time. Of course, um, I won't speak to that. That's his experience. My experience was in it. Um, no, I'm a therapist by trade, so him being emotional or having those emotional moments was not something that like I felt like I looked at him less than like he still was the head of the household. He was still the one that was like calling the shots. He was still the man. Like and he would experience a lot after that, you know? And even with that, it was like praying over him, still calling him King, even though he didn't feel like a King, you know, making sure that I was trying like at that time, like praying over him, making sure that we were like really like staying together strong because it did feel like the world was against him at that time. And then like going out of my way to make him feel loved and supported. Like um, I remember, yeah, I'm not going to get into details, but going out of my way to make sure he was feeling loved and supported. But as a therapist, if you see anybody, man or woman, express themselves to that level um, of vulnerability online, what are some things that you would think might be an underlying issue? So my first thought whenever I see somebody like expressing emotion on the Internet is, is you know, I call in a question a lot of times and this is just in general. This is not to anyone specifically, but mm -hmm. it's like more motivation. I always feel like, what's the motivation behind it? Um, and then I call into question. Um, yeah, really, it comes into it comes into like what's what's what what is your what's the intention? What's the goal behind the behavior? What what are you trying to accomplish by this? I've also learned in this space because I'm on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's like I feel it's like there no one is your they're not your friends. Like these people are not like strangers are not your friends. And that I think so true. They're not like we, 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 we vent and we give all this to people that they don't ultimately like we're looking for or seeking validation from the wrong places. That's where I typically go to in my, in my space. Now I look at it like I can't seek validation or applause from people, from man. Because it's mm. up and down, it's in and out. You never know what 
One day you could say something, everybody love you. Next day you could say something, everybody hates you. It's up and down. And if I continue to put myself forth, my val- how I feel about myself by how people see me on a given day, I, I would be completely unstable. So I have to put my validation in my hand and my God's hands because those things are stable. And so I look at it when I see people on, you know, that struggle on the internet and struggle and in, in are crying, you know, doing that. It, it hurts because I, I know that like because of the way social media is now, people use that as a medium to get validation, to get certain internal needs met and probably have never been taught how to do it for themselves. They lack the skills, the abilities to understand how to manage this medium yeah. in a way that is responsible. And because of that, whether that be, I wasn't taught that at home, I wasn't given that, you know, maybe I didn't get that validation from my mom or my dad. Maybe I didn't have that, that, that ability. Like, I think it just comes and reeks of brokenness. And I, I have a lot of empathy. I don't look at people like, oh, that's, I don't, I don't ever look at it that way. I just look like, wow, they're hurting. They're broken. There's, there's, they're seeking it. And, I, and they're seeking it from a place that they will never be able to actually get what they're looking for. Yeah. Because it can't come from people. It can't come from mere mortals. Yeah. No, that, might, that, that makes a whole lot of sense. That makes sense. And now that you're talking about a year being now fully, you know, fully divorced, four years separated, mm -hmm. a year fully divorced. How long does it take to emotionally recover, you know, from a divorce? How long does that take? I don't think you ever stop. I think you just keep recovering. Like, Healing is a journey. I don't know if there's ever a destination. It's a journey. But it got to be some point where like, it's irresponsible for me to like, for example, it's sure. irresponsible for me to start dating someone. Yeah. Because I need to like no, get 100%. patched up to a certain 100%. point where right. I can bring myself, introduce right. somebody else into my life. Right. If we can at least talk about, let's, let's at least make that a destination, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Now me wanting to, I'm, I'm divorced and mm -hmm. I'm looking at dating. Mm -hmm. What's like the minimum threshold I should be looking to get myself to emotionally, mentally, spiritually before I think I'm in a good and healthy enough space to start, you know, bringing uh, people into my life. Look at your conversations. What are they about? What are they, what are you talking about? Like if you're still in a space of when you're having like day-to-day -day conversations with people or even, you know, when people, they go on, on days I can tell, like even with, with stories I've heard or even my own personal experiences, like, oh, they're not over there. They're the last person I can tell. Because mm -hmm. they bring it up the situation. They bring it up what happened. You know, they want to, they're, they're still, you know, going through the, the, the little intricacies of the last situation, still very much in that um, frame of mind. That is a, that is a red flag that you're not ready, that you need to take some time to just really truly get to a place of healing. Because um, I think people kind of, you you can get to a place where you go out and not bring somebody else into it. You know what I'm saying? Now you bring somebody else into it and depending on where they are in their life and in their mind, you may be, you know, trauma bonding together vicariously, not, you know. And so I, I think it's, uh, that's a big flag. It's just, what are your conversations about? Definitely lean on your wise counsel. Um, I would hope that if you are in, a you know, recovering from divorce, you are seeing a therapist. I, in very much so during the last three and a half, almost four years of my life, I've probably talked to a therapist every week, if not every other week. Um, and so being in a therapy process, making sure you're being open, making sure you're being uh, with the people that you love and that you are like really leaning on your support system yeah. Um, and allow them to tell you as well. Like ask them for real, like people that you know, going to be honest with you yeah. and hold you accountable. Be like, you think I'm ready to be out, like out here? You know, I know people in my life, loved ones that, you know, they, they're going through something and I'm like, you're not ready. You can't give nobody nothing right now. You too emotional. You still like, and I'm talking about men. I'm not even talking about women. I'm talking about, well, I do that for women too, but men, that I'd be like, you know, I think men very much want to get into something new. And yep. I think that it's, I, no, I, I see it so all the time. Like I see it on my platform all the time. Like, and I see it, you know, in my, like with my friends and different people like that. They just want to get into something else. And it's like, nah, take a beat, you know, really, really understand and rediscover 
who you are because this process changes you. Any breakup, any breakup of any relationship changes you. And if you're not careful, you're going to be choosing from a place of pain, a wounded place versus a place of clarity. And I can tell when people are choosing from that place because it'd be like everything your ex wasn't. That's what you're looking for. So be mm. like, oh, I was dating a cheater. Well, he don't cheat no more. Now you with this dude who the only thing he don't do is not cheat. Because you, when you were choosing, you were only you were choosing from a broken place. And so I think that that's something that you have to really like look into. That's some a look at your conversation. And I think when you think about the conversation, it's really a reflection of your thoughts. Absolutely. You know, so I think that's something that people should really be conscious of, too. Because I don't think we think about, our, you know, audit our thoughts enough just in general. And if you if your ex is still heavily dominating your thoughts and dominating your mind, just know it. And I've, I mean, obviously, obviously I've never been married, but just in dating, just talking to women, a woman who is constantly talking about her ex. Or comparing you to them. Oh my gosh. That's a sign. Let me tell you something. You're right. That's like, she's not ready. No. If I'm comparing you, that means I'm now choosing from a place of pain. So if I'm on a date with you, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Cause my ex. Okay. No, you know what I'm saying? Or like, even if it's a, a compliment to you, to what you're doing versus what the other person is doing, whether they're talking about them in a positive or a negative is to me is, is a sign too much is this is a sign. No, I, I, yeah, I 100% get it. Do we got some members in here or anything we need to shout yeah, out? Yeah, we got a couple of them. Shout out to uh, Marvetta. Shout out to Marvetta. She's dope. Marvetta just dropped 10 memberships. Marvetta, that's on. Point. Wow. Yeah. Marvetta 10 memberships. Crazy. Yeah, shout, shout out, out Marvetta. Shout out to Nana Smith. Actually became a member and upgraded to the uh, elite membership. Shout out to Nana too. Where to be and then Marvetta doubling down because she actually threw over a question too, which I think is a really good one. So shout out to Marvetta. She says, without expressing, without expressing emotion, how are you defining love? That's the question. That's part one. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. She got a two-part question. As an emotional woman. How do you define and know love? Also, please tell me, <laughs> she said, everybody hit the like button. So I think it's a two-part question. So I guess what is, how do you define love without emotion? And then how would you define it as an emotional woman? I, I don't think love, I think, is very much beyond a feeling. So I wouldn't, I, I think that it's it's beyond feelings. Of course, it can be expressed in your feelings and your emotions be all over the place, whatever. But I think that love, I go, I, you know, y'all, I know, I don't even know what the chat is saying, but I know I'm talking a lot about that. But I definitely go off like first Corinthians 13 love, which is obviously describing more of an agape love, but it's more about actions. It's more about what, um, choosing that person. How do you, how do you make decisions? How do you, um, think about your day. How do you think about the things that you're doing? I think a lot of times we can say we love somebody and your actions don't align with what you're, what you're saying. So even if you were saying it, I'd be like, well, I mean, you still doing this, you know, this hurts me, you know, or whatever that may be. But I think that a lot of times you can tell just by how someone makes choices, their actions, whether they're considering you, whether they're um, making sacrifices for you, whether they're, um, how they make your experience with them, of course, but you know, you can have positive experiences with people that don't love you. So that's also something, mm. but I think it's definitely, it just, it really is about like, I look at more sacrifices. What am I willing to sacrifice for you? If I love you, what am I willing to do? Um, that is unique to you. And, and, and is for you and I don't benefit from like, what am I willing? I feel like that's where I see a lot more of someone's love for me is more about like the sacrifices I'm willing to make for them and the, the commitments that I'm willing to do for them specifically, the choices I'm making because of them. Um, and then vice versa. Mm. So that's the first Answer first I think second. you I think you kind of took both of them, I think I would I say. Took them on yeah, yeah. Like a boss. <laughs> Marvetta, I, I'll be honest. <laughs> like a, little, a it was, boss. It was a little confusing, Marvetta, but I think, <laughs> I think we got it. No, no, not, not you. Not you. I'm talking about the question. The question. Oh, the question. yeah. The question, the question was the question. very like it was yeah. a little confusing. But she was saying as an emotional woman, how do I define it? And I, I think it's both, you know, I, I don't look at it as my emotions, really. It's it's the actions. 
Shout out to Drip Empress who just joined the membership. And real quick, so we got a yeah, we got yeah. a couple of shout out to TW too for sending over that super chat. Uh, we got Sloan Fidel. He sent over a couple. He sent over some oh, big Sloan, what, Papa Sloan. What, that's from my ship. You know Sloan? Yes. What's up, Sloan? <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh, something. you know Sloan? Yeah, First I know off, Sloan. We need Sloan in our community because <laughs> Sloan I know he's mine. Sloan, he's just, mine. Sloan just really drops. Sloan's some, a baller. He, he really drops some. He just, he drops some cash up in here for for a shout out to a hey, look. We love you, Sloan. Come join us in this. No, we no, Sloan. Stay, stay faithful to Sam, Sloan. You know we here. <laughs> so, Sloan, shout out to your people, too, coming over to support you. I yeah, think that's really dope. I yeah, think that's I really, really, really dope. That. We should have said you. put a Sam in the chat if you're here to support Sam. Oh, man. Now, you just dope. said it. You just said it. If you're from the community, jump a Sam over here. If this is your first time at Harley Initiated from the Samantha Lee channel, but go ahead. Yes, I, I want you to read, because yes. actually Sloan, you could tell he got a deep relationship with you because he kind of went in over here. Yeah. So, so check this out. First, I guess was a comment. He pretty much, he says, Tyrese clearly has shown his empathy. No, you know, he, he is, is empty without you. Wow. He cannot hide. He wants you. And basically Sloan is saying, as a man, we did feel he, for him. Oh, did we, did he pay? Did he pay? Yeah. Yeah. He did. <laughs> Yeah. She like she like I don't want to read. Oh yeah. Oh the camera's on me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, I thought I that. Um. No, for, wow, you had to say that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. See, I mean, everybody's so, gonna see this. Everybody's yeah. gonna see this. So they gonna see this. They gonna see him say it. Yeah. yeah. It's oh. like look, we're we're live right yeah, now. He, this, he, no, no, he this, paid this, a super this, chat. This is not what you said. This is what Sloan no, said. No, this is not what you. This is what Sloan said. Man. I know. I I know. Now, look, finish reading it. Finish reading it. He said, but he says, as a man, we feel for him and want him to stop because it's a bad look. He's and you know he says some other things, but he pretty much saying that he thinks. Tyrese is a broken man. Now, and I go to the next one though, because he actually asked, asked a question here. Conversely, Sam, he says, were there red flags about you that he didn't see that you say existed and that you have addressed that make you more marriageable now? I was a runner. And it, okay. You also oh, that was you. You was actually speaking about yourself. Yeah, I was. You you, you was a what? A runner. I was a runner. What's up? What does sure. that mean? I was somebody that if you know you trigger certain things. You know, I, I I am one that walks away from the, from the relationship. Is isn't that what they call the avoidant? Yeah, assassin? they call it a they call, well. You, I I'm actually a different kind of avoidant. Like it's a it's kind of it's it's called and it's like ancient. It's it's like anxious something avoidant. It's Got like it. something it has an anxiety component to it. Okay, but um yes. So I am somebody that can um in the past in my past relationships you know i have been one to not you know work through it and like like i shared on oh. this on this thing i have made a lot of i've done a lot of work in in my ego yeah um and, and pride um and not trying to like put on a front or anything like that but that was not me when i you know got married um and then in addition to that I'm I'm a I'm an emotional person. I've made emotional decisions. Um and because of that, you know, I've 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 de I definitely fell sh fell short in that way it was my emotionality. Um cuz emotionality can swing a lot of different ways and and not being um having more control on on those things is something that every man should be paying attention to with women. I, I, not just <sighs> No, no, no. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've talked about this on many episodes prior. One of my biggest fears is to have me a woman that once we fall into that pit, she's running away. Mm -hmm. And obviously it probably could be because I've grown up in a household where I've already experienced divorce. Sure. You know, I'm inundated with images online of divorces just happening. We're just like knee deep and entrenched in this divorce culture. Yeah. And it's just not healthy mentally. So is it safe to say that if I'm talking to a woman and I see that she's a woman who's very quick to leave her relationships without really you'll putting up it. a fight? If no, she tells me that. You'll see it. You, it's not it's not so much like it's not so much. It's not hidden. I, I think a lot of times we think it's it's hidden. It's not hidden. It's a situation where let's say you get into a fight and, you know, you're with, dealing with a woman and she says to you. 
um, you, you, it gets heated or you call her out on something or whatever, or y'all are just, it's just a bad place and she can't explain or she gets overly, much, you know what, forget it. I'm out. I'm about to leave. Just in the argument, just in that dynamic. So she's threatening. Yeah, she's, okay. she's threatening in the dating. You gonna know. Facts. So you don't have to, like, I think some people are really afraid of that. And I think that it's, it's going to be apparent way before then. You've got to I, I don't know to about, but, but see, it wasn't apparent. It was, I mean, here's the thing though. It wasn't necessarily, well, is it because it wasn't necessarily apparent that you were somebody who will walk away from relationships? Is it because that you guys moved together so fast that he probably didn't get a chance no, to see that? No, no, he did see that. He definitely oh, saw wow. it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. No, so you threatened it. to move, you threatened to end a relationship in dating? Yes. Wow. Yeah, for sure. I did. Wow. And that was something that, you know, that, I'm, I'm not saying that, that that's something that I had to work on and I, yeah. I, I needed to really address um but that was something that was present in that dating relationship honestly man i think that's such a good game because i don't know if all guys are a lot of guys might just rule that off or oh man she's just emotional she's just a lady and they may not know that that is a that could be a long-term problem or issue that needs to be worked through they could just to work through it it's, it's possible to work through it i mean i, I like now that it's now that i'm Oh, you know, at a different place in my life, you know, it's, it's, you can work through it. You can absolutely work through it, but you have to, you first have to acknowledge it as a problem. I don't think people really, they, they look at it as like, oh, I'm strong. I don't tolerate nothing. You know, I just cut them off. I just cut them off. There's songs about cutting people off. Yeah. I cut off game strong. You know what I'm saying? So if, if, if you identify that, cause the, I think a lot of women, if you ask them, is your cutoff game strong? They gonna answer that in a certain way. So that's a red flag. That's a red flag, and it's not something that you should. You should you should pay attention to that. No, that, no, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. I don't think it's it, but it's not something that she can't recover from, but she also has to acknowledge, and want that to change because it protects her. So, like, if someone is handling a conflict with you, they're arguing with you, and then they become like. They, they either walk out, they storm out, like, you, let's say you, you, they at your house or your apartment, like, I'm out, I ain't dealing with this, we not going to be doing it, and they, like, leave the situation or whatever. That's that's already showing you, like, that's kind of like how that situation goes, right? But in that happening, there are there is a sense where you should separate. If it's getting to a certain degree, separation is needed you know, cooler heads to prevail. But if someone's like blocking you in conflict or you're constantly breaking up yeah. or it's like, you know, you get into something and then you date, now you can't reach them. Now they're not answering their phone. Now they're not like, they're not giving you certain feedback and things like that. That's somebody that struggles with, a, like they may struggle with abandonment and therefore abandon. Mm. So is that where that came from from you with you? Yeah. Abandonment from where? My father left at a young age, but that's, I think that that always kind of, I mean, it's, it's not, my father was in my life, my whole, like my whole life. So I will never, I do not want this to at all reflect as my father was not present. My father has been an amazing dad. My parents divorced. My father left the house. And I remember that day. And I think that in that, in my mind, I always felt the need. I saw a lot. And I think I always felt the need to have my guard up and not allow myself to like be in a place where I'm so vulnerable, where like, I don't, I'm not able to rebound from it. Mm. You know, I didn't, I never wanted to be caught in that, in that position. So removing yourself from the relationship was how you protected yourself. Mm -hmm. All the time. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something very important that we, we should know. And I think you talk about premarital counseling and somebody being able to ask those hard questions. Mm -hmm. Those are things that probably could have been identified mm -hmm. and, you know, probably could have been talked about. Yeah, you can't rush. I, I think that people can get married quickly. I'm not saying that they can't. But what I am saying is dating is evaluating data like we're like I in my exchange with you right now you're exchange you're getting data for me you're understanding yeah. me a different way you're understanding me a different way also asking me super hard questions 
<laughs> on live. So you're catching me, you know, but you're, you're evaluating me and you should be evaluating me. That's smart. That's wisdom. I think a lot of times where I think people go into dating and relationships with a goal in mind and not paying attention to the data. Yeah. Like, oh, I think this girl's bad. Let me just, I just want her. It's like, no, you need to be paying attention to other things that come. You have to be paying attention to everything that people are saying, are doing, how they deal with conflict, how they deal with stress, how do they deal with their emotions. You know, I'm saying that. And when I do that on my platform, I'm when I'm telling men to watch out for that, I'm saying it because I know it firsthand. Yeah. I know that you shouldn't, if someone's emotionally like this and they have no way of regulating themselves because you should not be responsible to regulate somebody else's emotions. Yeah. They have to learn how to handle, to, to, to improve and work on that skill in therapy and do their own work. But if a woman cannot handle her own emotions or self-regulate or find, or, or even say that it's a problem enough to get into a therapy situation, that is not somebody you should be considering in a wife way, in my opinion. If mm -hmm. some, if, if she is un unable to handle stress in a healthy meaningful and functional way or does not express the desire to change that. Because here's the thing. We do things that work. If I'm doing something over time that has worked in protecting me. So it's going to be a lot for you to ask me to change that. Yeah. Right. So I have to then identify it as being a problem for myself to effectively do the work outside of you in our relationship, because if I'm only changing for the relationship, then I mean, shoot, as soon as you, you can tell within a couple of weeks or a couple of months, how committed I am to what I say I'm going to do for you and that I don't identify as a need for myself. So is it safe to say that the, re the reason the relationship ended more than anything else wasn't because of necessarily who you were with, but it was more so because of where you were, where you were personally, emotionally. I can't, I mean, I don't, I never want to go into like the specifics as to why. No, I, no, I don't want you to go into, I, oh, I, I, no, okay. I don't want you to go into specifics. See, what I'm saying is, cause I imagine if you're not somebody that knows how to handle conflict. Yeah. At that, well, at that time, at the end of my marriage, yes. I was. No, no, no. Yeah. That's that's, right. that's my point. More so than I was in the beginning. So, okay. So you saying you were more equipped. You you were not, you were, were wait, so were you or were you not avoidant or still in the play, the person that would want to remove themselves at so the end of your marriage? At the end of my marriage, I was more, I was more at a place of staying through hard times. Okay. I had worked on that, but that was an issue that came up in our marriage. And you were talking about like red okay. flags throughout the duration of the marriage. That was something that was, that caused a problem in our relationship. Okay. That's what, what, that was Sloan's question was, was a red flag. He should have paid attention to you as according to me, my tendencies that I worked, I had to work out through the marriage that I don't necessarily, I don't know if the end part, the end part was more of me being very emotional and hurt. Yeah. It wasn't, like necessarily triggering the running reflex. Okay. It was more my emotions being hurt, unforgiveness and moving on that and not having, not allowing myself to hear or anyone really, I wasn't listening. And plus I wasn't hearing, you know, no one was telling me, you know, certain things that we talked about in the beginning, what I'm saying in our relationship, what made it hard was because were certain things, my running tendencies was what made it, a little bit more challenging in our relationship that he should have, that he should have paid attention to. Is there anything else that you just noticed that guys might miss regularly that you, that they should evaluate? That might be something common that you might really need to work through prior. I think, you know, somebody being avoidant and wanting to remove themselves from conflict is a really great one. Yeah. And actually something I, I see, I mean, rather common, from guys as well. I'm going to be honest with you. No, guys are absolutely notorious for that. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, like the guys, I'm, I'm speaking as when you're asking my right flag for me that he should pay attention to, that was, you know, something I can say as a woman, I do. Yeah. But men absolutely. Do yeah. That. No, 100%. Um, and, and, and try to remove themselves and, you know, yeah. Just because it's, it's easier to, and you don't have to feel the emotion and it's pretty much a, so you're taking control over the situation. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And is is there something else that you might know off the top of your head as well? Because I kind of like I kind of like gaming up my guys, and you probably somebody that could really give us some good insight. <laughs> oh Lord. Um, okay. So one other thing would I say is a, a accountability. Someone that can't it, take accountability. But what does that look like in particular? Let's be clear, because I, I we feel like hear I that. am a dazzling picture of accountability <laughs> today. Like now, have you have you always been though? No. No, I had to go to therapy for that. In your marriage, or did your accountability kick in after no, marriage? No, no, it was it was before. I, I was I was accountable. I was accountable all throughout. I was very. I'm able to hold myself accountable it's all accountable. throughout. Yeah, all throughout, I was pretty much, I feel like I was pretty, I mean, I feel like there was times where I probably wasn't the best. I'm not going to say I was perfect in taking accountability all the time, but I was always someone that could go back and reflect and be like, I'm wrong, my bad, I'm sorry. And I should have done that differently. And I would, I would like go out of my way to apologize. You know, that was something that I absolutely did during my marriage I because I had practiced a skill before. You know, when you're sitting in front of a therapist, especially a therapist like mine, she was holding me accountable. So I got accustomed to holding, like owning up to the things that I was doing and why I was doing it and being challenged in that way. Um, but I would say before, prior to my marriage, absolutely not. I had to, I had to do some work. Okay. As a man... Obviously, I want my woman to be accountable. Sure. I've seen certain acts of accountability, you know, from dating a woman. Okay. And I can give a couple examples, but I want to hear from you just in your your idea of like, can you give me a good example of like, this is more of like the green flags, <laughs> like some healthy accountability, right? In a relationship. Like, can you give me a, a well, you could just think back on the time like you displayed accountability. And like for, you know, and just really just to paint the picture so we can get a good idea of what that is. Um, I think when someone holds themselves accountable, it is more about like, I'll give you, I'll give you an example, but I just want to say what it is first. Okay. It's more like if I do something that I know hurts you, or I do something that I know is wrong, we both know is wrong, but I refuse to say that's wrong, that hurts you, or apologize for it without blame shifting or excusing the behavior or putting it on something else. It's complete ownership over my behavior. Mm. That's what I call accountability. It's like, I'm not going to blame this on that. I'm not going to blame this on this. I'm not going to blame it on the circumstance. I'm going to say, you know what? I was wrong. My bad. I'm sorry. I should have never done that to you. Like, And look at you in the eyes and be able to really communicate to you understanding of what I did to hurt you. That's accountability. And I think a lot of people because of ego sometimes can't do that because if I admit that I'm wrong, then that means there's something wrong with me and therefore I need to change. And I don't want to change. I like the way that I am. So I'm not going to admit a flaw, even though we know we're all imperfect. And so it really does come down to really for me, it was more insecurities that, held me from being able to hold myself accountable and allow others to hold me accountable. Once I became more secure with self, which was an internal spiritual process, I was able to really say, I'm wrong. I know I'm imperfect. I know I'm imperfect. I need a savior. And because I know that about me, I'm able to say, you know, that was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. That was bad. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I could have done that better. I could have done this. I mean, there was a, there was times um, oh, I can, I can say like recently I had a situation, not recently, but more recently I had a situation where I was, um, I was on a call. I have a group of women that I work with and I can be abrasive when I'm speaking. I can be very like passionate and deliver my message. And sometimes I can come off in a way where someone feels like they're being disrespected or diminished or, you you know, and so after that call, you know, I could go off because I'm the host. I could go off and say, never mind. Let me, you know, whatever. They can get over it. They're being sensitive. I could just kind of push it off. 
But, you know, I found out where the, who that where the, who that person was, not who that person was, because I knew who they were, but their phone number, things like that. I called them, got on FaceTime, got on a Zoom, and we spent two hours processing what I did. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And I, I really, I really, you know, I take ownership. Like, no, we know, I, you know, I know how you are. We know you didn't mean anything by it. Like, I didn't take it that way. But I still went out of my way to make sure that, like, I communicated that I was completely in the wrong. Like I, you know, I got to own it. I got to work. That's something I got to work on. Now, listen, uh, what I want though, I want to hear you tell the ladies, <laughs> give them a relationship example. Oh, you want a relationship? Because listen, I'm going to be, I'm, I have really found this. I'm going to be honest with you. I found this. That is, I mean, no, that's a really good one. Talking about accountability because in my personal experience, I've really found that just to be something that most women really struggle with. Mm -hmm. Like even in the language that they use, when I try to even explain <laughs> Like, hey, this is something that, you know, whatever the case is. This is actually a funny example I have. Instead of actually just acknowledging <laughs> yeah. that, you know what, right, babe, blase, blase, blah, it sure. might be like, but what about this? Yeah. Or, but what if this happens here? Yeah. Or they might even create up a situation that never even happened altogether. But what if this could happen <laughs> and I do this? Is it still, instead of just acknowledging that, yo, my bad, you're right. Mm -hmm. And just falling back. That is a major struggle that a lot of women have. I'm going to be honest with you. But yeah. go ahead. I want to hear yours. So I had, a, I had a situation. I was dating somebody and I had gained like 20 pounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had to gain 20 pounds. And I was not like, I was purposefully not weighing myself at the time because I was like, oh, you know, I don't want to. It was kind of giving me anxiety, blah, blah, blah. Just like, let me not do that. Let me just give it, give it whatever. Well, I gained, I gained weight. And I kept asking this person, like, do I look like I gained weight? And they never responded with a yes. They always said, no, you look the same. You look fine. You don't look like you. This was a guy you was dating? This, yeah. Okay. This, this is a, yeah. This guy I'm dating, like, in a I was in a relationship with. Okay. And he said to me, um, what do you, like? Did I, well, he's like, well, I, I mean, you didn't look like it to me, but I went off. I went clean off on him. I'm like, how could you do this? Like, how could you possibly allow me to gain all this weight? You know how I feel, blah, 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 blah. Like went, went in, went in, was so mad. I'm like, you didn't tell me the truth. You're being dishonest. You lied. Why would you lie to me? Like just going all in. <laughs> That's funny now. And he was like, I didn't put the food to your mouth. I'm like, oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh, like how could you do this? Like, how could you say something like that? Like, how could you even work your mouth up to say something like that to someone you love? Like, blah, blah, you know, just and I got off the phone. Cause I really, I mean, I knew I was mad because I gained 20 pounds. Yeah. So after a while, I'm I'm I went to the dentist. I was at the dentist's office and I walk in and you know, all I could think about was like, oh, that was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. That was terrible. You shouldn't have done that. That was not his fault. You put this on him. You you do projected that was what you was feeling about you. That I could not quiet the conviction in my spirit. And I walked out of that dentist's office, which was like 20 minutes. I called him back and I said, babe, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Like, I'm so wrong. I am so, so wrong. I am, I am so sorry. I should not have said that to you. That was not your fault. I did this. And I'm going to change it. I'm going to lose it. And I did. But it was like me just like saying that. And he was like, wow, you know, like, I really appreciate that. Like, you really, he said something like, you really do live your raps. <laughs> he, said, he said something like, you, something about raps. I don't know what he said. Something about really live your raps. Are you out with your raps? Something like that. He was like, no, but I really do. Thank you. Thank you for like owning up and apologizing. He's like, you know, I could have said something different and my bad for that. And, you know, we moved on. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that that's, that's super valid. He should have kept it real though. That's, that's kind of crazy, but still you're right. 20 pounds. I was no, like, no, how should. did I gain 20 pounds? Or you didn't? He's like, you look the same to me. I'm like, no, I, nah, there's no nah, nah. way. Yeah, I didn't gain 18 pounds. You just did not notice. I don't know. I like, I'm not a big you know, weight person. So it's not like I look more thicker, you know, like more than like any, anything else. And I guess that maybe that he was okay with that. Maybe that was why he didn't let me know, but regardless, doesn't matter. I was mad, but yeah. No, I, I, I get that. I 100% I get that. But fellas, don't lie to you. Don't, don't lie to the ladies now. 
And well, ladies, on your end too, if you want to turn your man on, take some damn accountability. That's one of the sexiest things that you can do. That call there, that call there would have set it off for me. Even I wouldn't have been in that situation because I, <laughs> I wouldn't allow you about because yeah. gaining weight. Yeah, because I mean, it, it's not. It, see, it's about the why too. Because if your lady's gaining weight, that could just be a symptom of something else. Mm -hmm. That's really going on, mm -hmm. but I appreciate you actually coming up and giving us an example. Sure. Ryan, what else we got for the what else we got for the people here, man? Because we winding down. If y'all have some questions or some super chats, y'all need to send it here because Sam has been here since eight, okay, p.m. We gotta get her back home, so y'all better what go ahead and send these last few here. Yes, you are in a hyperbolic time chamber here. Time does not exist. I don't tonight. have my phone, y'all. I don't know what time it is. I don't know how many. I don't it's even about know 10, 20, it ain't bad. It ain't bad. Wow. Yes. So I've been here for two over two hours. Time flies when you have fun. I did not know that. It actually doesn't feel like I've been here for two hours. To be honest That's what yeah. all yeah. Have been fun. Yeah. of the people say when they come up on this joint. All right. Okay. And I want y'all to go up in here. Man, Ryan, you, listen, rhyming, rhyming, quiet here. Now you've been listening, man. You ain't got no, you ain't got no questions for this beautiful Samantha. No, 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 no questions right now. I think she pretty much laid it out for us. No super chats. <laughs> no super, no super chats at all. Okay, well, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you, Samantha. Listen, you came up here and you really gave us a lot of perspective. And the thing about it is, I, I think it's so important for us to talk about <clears throat> this side of of marriage and divorce and actually with how you started a conversation talking to us as well mm -hmm. about some of your regrets the regrets that you had that is something that we don't hear a lot of ladies speak about and that you saying that and being honest in that way could have literally changed the course of somebody's marriage and relationship tonight because I don't think that all of these divorces that's happening need to happen. No, I agree. I do think divorce in some case is healthy. Yes. But just the peace and the sanity of some folks. Mm -hmm. But I also think some of it is just us not being patient through the process. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they say, right? Love is patient. Mm -hmm. Love, Love is, is kind. kind. Mm -hmm. But Love is not self-serving. It's not self-serving. Mm -hmm. But we're not really showing a very patient love as a culture. Mm -hmm. We're showing a very selfish mindset and mentality so i appreciate you coming up here and reinforcing the fact that sometimes we need to be patient mm -hmm. through the pain mm -hmm. and through the process yeah and be focused on the greater purpose of the the union because i'm telling you guys again that may not necessarily be the right option that may be what you feel right now but not necessarily the yeah. right option and if you could talk if if, if it's somebody right now that's kind of in that place and if you can give them some game before we get out, get up out of here, Sam, I want you to just say some words to that person to help guide them and make sure that they make the best position, the best decision possible. I, I want to say to people that anybody that's considering something like this, I want you to first know that it is an absolutely life changing situation it is something that is to be taken extremely seriously. It's not something this is. It's devastating as i've discovered as I've, I've uncovered in this um entire thing um i want you to know that if you are highly emotional if you're upset you just got through an argument you just you're just you're in high emotionality i would say to you do not make a decision it is not wise to make any type of decision when you are highly emotional or what i would call or my pastor calls it emotional intoxication mm. it is not wise to do anything in an unsober state, including emotions. Um, I also would say that um, make sure you are speaking to wise counsel. You're listening to wise counsel, not wise counsel. That's just your homegirls or your homeboys or your ego. Y'all ego and pride got to go out. It's got to go out the door. Is it when it comes to marriage, we got too much ego in society. It's too much about me, 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 I protecting you. You got to throw the ego and the pride out the door and really say like, okay, what about the team? What about the covenant? What about the, you know, what about the togetherness? You know, I, I wasn't, I don't know if I necessarily was taught that as much, if I'm being honest. Mm. And I would say that it's, it's, you should absolutely be thinking about, okay, if I, if I do this, 
I may be winning the battle, but I lose the war because no one wins in divorce. Everybody loses. Man. And the war, war is lost, you know. So. No, listen, nobody wins when the family feud, like you said no earlier. And um, listen, guys, I really want y'all to um, go ahead and please like this video and subscribe to this channel before we go about ending this out. I appreciate y'all tuning in here. Another action-packed Monday night as we go deep, as you know how we do on Harley Initiated. Right now, we still got a, man, we still got a handful of people in here. Please like this video and subscribe before you go about leaving us. Hit over a thousand tonight. Here tonight. Yes, this was definitely... The people was tuned in and they listened. And again, man, listen, we love y'all <laughs> a ton. All the initiates in here, uh, you know, we still are looking to grow the family, the initiation, the membership. So if you want to be an initiate, we're going to continue to drop that link for you to go about joining. And as y'all know, guys, every Monday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m., we are going to bring you an amazingly transformational conversation like the one we had today. As well as Sunday, please. If y'all haven't dropped, man, that, the video that we that we just recently dropped this Sunday with Tony Gaskins is going absolutely amazing. So if y'all trying to stay up late tonight and do some binging, make sure y'all go about uh, checking that one out. But Samantha Lee, thank you so much. Thank you for coming up on here and joining us here tonight on Hardly Initiated. I have a good feeling, a good sense this won't be your last time here <laughs> on the show here <laughs> with us. This is just the beginning here, mm. but I really do appreciate you coming up on here and being open and honest here with us tonight, okay? <sighs> well, y'all y'all put it on me. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, Game Changer Nation, my, my channel, I'll be back, be back on uh, Wednesday. I'm going live with No Chill Gil, uh, Gilbert Arenas. So go ahead. Oh, and, that's uh, going to be crazy. Yeah. yeah so I'm going live with Gilbert Arenas on, uh, on Wednesday. So go ahead, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And we were going to make sure we drop. Uh, we've been dropping, actually, uh, Sam's information in this joint all night. So, again, make sure y'all tap in with this beautiful sister here. And, um, listen, y'all already know, y'all. Listen, hardly initiated. Woo! We <laughs> are out.